IIT, Hospital Administration, etc. Dr. Atul Mohan Kochar, CEO QCI NABH. He is an active participating clinician with an MD and DNB in Dermatology and a passion for quality in healthcare. Dr. L. Prabhakar Rao couldn't join us today. We have Dr. Funny, who is a senior medical officer in his place. Please welcome all. Could we have uh, Dr. Bijan to please come on stage and hand over the mementos? Welcome plants. Oh, welcome plants. You are welcome and a departure. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Lovely. Lovely. Please give a huge round of applause. <laughs> We would actually request, yeah, all, all the backbenchers, I think, should be the first bench students and participants today. So please, it will be very nice if you could all occupy the front seats. A very good afternoon to each one of you present here, the dignitaries, MC members of FTCCI and stakeholders of the health and insurance industries. I think after lunch, the session has to be slightly brightened up because I'm sure all of us want to settle down for a cozy conversation rather than listen to a panel because we've had a good feast but in a short while. Having said that, I would set the tone for this session by first opening a question to all participants in this room such that we invigorate key attention for the final session. Are we starting a new landscape for the insurance sector? Are we starting a new landscape for the insurance sector? Anybody would want to address their opinion on this? Yes? Yes, yes. I'm opening it. Yes, yes. What is your version of the new landscape in that scenario? Everybody is smiling and accessing healthcare, which is of high quality. Absolutely. So, as I resonate with what Mr. Mishra said just now, in an ideal world, everyone will be fully covered by health insurance without any out of pocket expenses for healthcare. Wow. India is big, betting big on making this perfect scenario a reality in its Amrit Kaal. <coughs> Having said this, nothing moves without the government today. However, they need to be once in a while woken up to tell them that they can do a lot more than what they are already doing. Having said this, I think I would like to address the panel and the panelists on stage with me gracing the occasion and having given us time. I thank all the panelists for being here and of course the participants who are waiting to listen from the stakeholders actually. We would like to know from the panel members some of the success stories in making healthcare affordable and accessible. So we'll start with you sir, Mr. Kocha. 
Thank you so much, ma'am, and thank you to FTCCI and the leadership of FTCCI for giving this opportunity, and uh, thank you to all of you for waiting and listening and being a part of the program. Uh, I think this has been a wonderful experience for me personally. And uh, speaking about, uh, you said affordable, accessible care. Uh, I think the key word here also is the quality in healthcare. So uh, I, th I think, uh, just to give you a background, <coughs> there are only a handful of countries in the world. There are about 197 countries plus two observer countries, etc. But out of these, all these 197 or 199 countries, only a handful of countries have their own healthcare standards. And India is very proud and privileged to be one. And NAB standards, which are a sterling example of totally Atmanirbhar, self-reliant uh, kind of standards, which have been introduced, it's a very young body. So just to give you a very brief overview of Quality Council of India, QCI was formed in 1997 under the umbrella of Ministry of Commerce to, and when all industry bodies such as CII, FICI and SOCHM came together with uh, Government of India to create Quality Council of India with an aim to create standards uh, required for trade and tariff. So that was the basic purpose. And then in 2005, Apollo Hospital, again Apollo, sir, they, they came and they got themselves, the Apollo Indraprasth got itself the uh, JCI accreditation, which is a joint commission international, uh, which has been around for 72 years, which is the accreditation agency of the US. So that, there was lots of hue and cry in the market and press that foreign drain is happening. It was happening. So why not India should have its own standard? In 2005, under the QCI umbrella, NABH was born. So NABH is one of the five boards under uh, QCI. NA, NABL is very prominent, which takes care of medical labs, testing lab, calibrating lab, etc. We have education and training board, we have certification body board, quality promotion board. Now we have a whole lot of divisions also and uh, about 1000 people sitting in Central Delhi working for QCI. So NABH came about into, and, and just one, the chairman of QCI is appointed directly by Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister, and the first chairman was Sri Ratan Dataji. So that, and then Sri Venu Srinivasan, then Sri Amitabh Khan, lots of very illustrious people nurtured that organization and uh, so QCI was born and similar for NABH also. So NABH was born in 2005, first standard in 2006 and since then every three years a standard is uh, released for the hospital accreditation program. Now going forward it is four years. As per international, we subscribe to ISQA, which is the global umbrella body. So our standards are at par. So JCI is also accredited by ISQA and with same credibility, I think NABH is also there. Starting from that one program, today we run about 26 programs and we are releasing more programs. Yeah, last, uh, and we have Ayush program, we have blood bank, nursing excellence, etc. And uh, also now we are already releasing, uh, release the draft digital health standards, the dialysis, the, cost, the dermatology, FOXI, etc. So today we touch about 17,000 hospitals in India and about 100 hospitals, uh, about let's say not 100, 100 are applicant, uh, nearly, nearly 100 hospitals in 8 countries. Uh, countries such as Middle East, Muscat Oman, uh, Sri Lanka, Philippines, eight hospitals in Philippines. So, so all these presents we are touching. And the basic aim, so that is the, with that background, what are these standards? So these standards address totally the quality in healthcare. They are woven around a matrix of patient safety and healthcare quality. What is good quality healthcare? Good quality healthcare, as so many students are here, they all know that it is effective. Effective means it follows evidence-based uh, practices. It is efficient, right? Yeah. And it is patient-centric. So a lot was said about patient-centric. Effective, efficient, patient-centric, safe, timely, and equitable. That means without caste, creed, gender, we provide all. So that is to aspire to, right? What, what in the recent past you mentioned about government, this session is all about government. So this present government has made the government institutes as accountable as the private also, which is very good. Of the 22 aims in India, 19 aims are today applicant. 
90 names. They are working towards NAVH certification, then go on to this thing. Ames Delhi, four units have already applied. Rishikesh, uh, Ajmer, they all have started to apply. Sabdajan Hospital, a 3,000 bedded hospital of Delhi, is already certified. RML Hospital, already certified. There are 16 institutes of government in Delhi alone which are certified and accredited. So both, sir. ILBS, IMAS, so, so there are many. Nimhans, Nimhans Bangalore is today accredited. So that means there is the accountability which is coming. And that is the need of the R because patients require not only affordable, accessible care, but quality of care. And what is this? There are many myths related to NABH which I am, I'll try to bust maybe going forward. One that they are expensive. No, they are not expensive. It is plain for 11,000 rupees we pro for two years we provide uh, certification for smaller thing. It's it's a it's a dirt cheap, and and for for the biggest hospital in the country, biggest like Apollo or whatever, they are also there with us. So uh, we charge only five lakh rupees, while the JCI charges one crore fifty lakh rupees. So so look the compare, see the comparison. So that that plus these are Indian standards. And they address all tenets of patient safety and quality in healthcare. So, this, this is not a prescription. It is beyond prescription. It's NABH standards, which are totally free, by the way. Anybody can download from site and go through them, even if they don't want to get it done. They are one of the matrix of uh, universal health coverage. You said, ma'am, that we aspire that every citizen of the country will have insurance. Very correct. And every provider should be having some basic level. They are not treating veterinary, they are treating human beings. So some levels of quality, basic tenets of patient safety, which are hand hygiene, they should be followed. Fire safety should be there. So beyond, some basic things are there and that entry level, Dr. Alex also spoke, Dr. Bijan Mishra sir is on our board also and he very rightly brings forward the agenda of patient uh, advocacy. You know, who's taking care of the patient? All of us are patient. Even if I'm a doctor, some of the time I'll have to be. Right? So somebody I should know is taking care and these standards which are by the government heavily subsidized, heavily, heavily subsidized and they are very easy to follow, extremely easy to follow uh, are, are, should be, should be uh, form the basis. I'll take a pause here but... <coughs> Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I represent the Argastri Healthcare Trust here on behalf of our CEO, ma'am. The changes that have been made in the last few years is that the uh, white ration cards were there, which were issued in the year of uh, 2010, and after that, these white ration cards are not there. So recently what we have done is the food security card which is the valid one and that is the live one and the particular person who is correcting the food security card usage and then these are the people that are eligible for getting the services of RGST services. That way we have got 90 lakh families that are covered under uh, RGST Healthcare Trust. The number of packages that were there were 1,025 previously. From that, now we have got uh, 1669 packages, and some of the high-end uh, packages which were not there previously, like say the uh, knee replacement and other things, are also being planned to be included under RGST after some time. Though it's it's not not for public purposes, but that's one thing. The other important aspect that we see is some, uh, as we think about the way forward for 2030 is that the accountability of the hospitals is also taken care of in the sense that there is a regular audit of the treatment that has been provided to the beneficiaries, especially in those cases who have had an uh, unacceptable or not very favorable outcome out of the procedures. All those cases are subjected for an audit and then uh, death audit reports, whatever has been done by the hospitals, those are reviewed once again and in situations where
there is a need, we give a feedback to the hospitals to bring about changes in the quality of uh, services that are there either in the operation theatres or pre-anesthetic workup or evaluation of a beneficiary before being taken up for surgery. Such are the suggestions that we are giving to the hospitals. So far as the beneficiaries are concerned, there is a system where the registered mobile gets a normal SMS saying that there is a pre-authorization raised on your name, on your card. This is in order to see that there is no uh, misuse by X person using the card of a Y person or things like that. So these are some of the things that we are uh, we have brought about recently. <coughs> and it's our intention to see that the clearance of the bills can be filed, hazened up. We have, there we have a problem, but I think that's one thing which is our priority, which is governed by various other cogwheel, wheel within wheel. So these are the issues that we are taking care of. Another thing is the awareness that is required to be uh, given to the persons who are being given treatment for these uh, high turnout uh, uh, procedures, like say wherever there is a cardiac problem, counseling the family and other things with reference to various preventive aspects that could be there so that such problem doesn't recur in the genetically related persons. These are the things that we are doing. And the other change is that prior to uh, 2019, the package amount per family was 2 lakhs. That has been now raised to 5 lakhs per family per year. So these are the changes that have uh, taken place in RGS here. Wonderful, sir. I would now request Mr. Prabhakar Rao to please say a few words. Uh, I'm Dr. Fani. I'm representing on behalf of our additional director, Dr. Prabhakar Rao. So, first thing I expect uh, in any meeting where there are hospital representatives, the first question I always get is when are the rates are going to be revised. So, uh, I'm fortunate before I sit here, uh, our people have already revised the room rent and consultation. And very soon you are expecting the revision and package rates. It's in the final touches. So, uh, next thing is, I am, I think it's a kid in the room, <laughs> but uh, our organization has been there since 1954 and is like the ideal insurance scheme that anybody would expect. Obviously, it was designed for an IAS officer. It is the ideal system. So, what we cover is not just an IP packages, but we also completely cover the consultation. We have in-house primary consultation doctors. Then we have specialist consultation through our internal hospitals. We cover the entire medicine expenditure, entire investigation expenditure, and anything like any expenditure that's beyond our package rates. We also have provisions to sanction them. And we also cover the costly cancer medicines. There are patients whom we are spending like nearly 10 lakhs per month. So we do provide such medicines too. So, this is one system which we have perfected in the last 50 years. Obviously, it is funded by government, so it's not influenced with the market forces. But this is a system where we need to take it to every person in the country. So, we have uh, multiple models like the, the US model, which everybody doesn't like because obviously uh, it is completely a commercial system. Obviously, they cover everything, but the rates are really high. Uh, then we have the German model where uh, they have a uh, one system for all, and over that, the private uh, insurance companies act as a top up. So uh, then we have the UK model where almost everything is covered by the public health, uh, public institutions. So the Indian model that we have is like a mix of everything. So we have the good qualities of all and probably not the disadvantages of all. So basically we have pieces from everywhere and we hope in the next 15-20 years will all these pieces will grow together and mature and become the best system in the world. Thank you.
good afternoon all i am from uh, esic i am uh, additional commissioner for uh, regional office Tel uh, telangana uh, first of all i would like to say that uh, esic has a undue advantage because uh, the most affordable health care which can be provided is being provided by the esic this i say because the rate of contribution is uh, 4% out of which 3.25% uh, is borne by the employers and 0.75% is borne by the employees so for such 4% contribution uh, payment the available uh, benefits under esi scheme are uh, totally like comprehensive i can say i can use the word comprehensive with uh, total confidence because it includes sickness if a worker is sick then for the period of uh, sickness where he cannot uh, go to his job so he need not be paid by the employer employer is also saved uh, on that cost and on the other hand this uh, con uh, compensation wage loss compensation will be made good by the esic and uh, the treatment for the sickness will be provided by the esic be it primary care wherein uh, on only opd services are required or whether if it is secondary care where hospitalization is required or even if it is super specialty care where uh, tertiary care hospital uh, treatment is required all of this the ips will get free of cost free of cost in the sense the for the payment of uh, 4% uh, contribution there is no upper selling uh, for the cost uh, uh, for any of the treatments so there is no upper selling there is no cost limitation except that there are certain uh, uh, eligibility conditions and even these eligibility conditions are kept very low say for example for a person to be eligible for medical care from day one of his employment he is eligible for medical care from day one whether he has paid any contribution or not he or she is eligible for uh, medical care and this care will continue even without any payment for the three months and subsequently on payment of contribution uh, they will get uh, the treatment so it is it is uh, very uh, comprehensive next even for uh, like uh, the vasectomy or tubectomy even those uh, if the things are covered uh, for a, a tubectomy the iw will get uh, paid for wages for 14 days and for vasectomy the person will get for 7 days then there is extended sickness benefit what we call as this is there are a schedule of uh, 34 diseases which are uh, which require long duration treatment and during this long duration treatment uh, the uh, worker may not be in a position to go to the job so he will get paid leave from the corporation and it, it will be from 124 days to 730 days two years two years is good enough for anybody to get treatment and get back healthy back to the office so uh, this is not only good for the uh, ip himself but his family and for his company and uh, the whole ecology and the system and society and there is this uh, when there is a injury injury results in incapacitance and this incapacitance what happens is they, they may not be in a position to go to office so we also give temporary disablement benefit so uh, this is for the entire period of temporary disablement he will be getting wages up to level of uh, 90 percent for the entire period so this is there and uh, once the uh, this temporary uh, temporary period is over that is the treatment is over he is sent to a medical board wherein they will assess uh, the uh, extent of incapacity so this extent of incapacity is assessed as a percentage of loss of uh, wages loss of earning capacity and this is compensated by way of payment for the whole of life the whole of life of a person he will get uh, this compensation because because of the injury because of the incapacitance uh, he has lost his uh, capability to earn at the earlier level so it is uh, compensated this is also there and then uh, maternity benefit maternity benefit uh, a woman get if he or she has uh, contributed for only 70 days in two contribution periods contribution period is a six month period which uh, starts from april to september 
and then from October to March. So in any one, one contribution period or two contribution period, if payment is made for 70 days, only 70 days, which is uh, around 9, nine 10 weeks, so the uh, woman will be eligible for uh, receiving 26 weeks uh, compensation at 100% of her wages. So 26 weeks uh, she will get and she will get it for two children, two live children. And even in case where there are uh, miscarriages, they will get it for uh, six weeks time. And that, uh, uh, that is also uh, twice. And then uh, we have this uh, dependence benefit. Uh, unfortunately, if a worker dies in the course of uh, employment injury, uh, his family, the spouse, will be paid the pension for throughout her life or till remarriage. And this covers even all, all the dependents. The dependents will be parents and the children. And in respect of children, both the male and female are included. Female children till their marriage. And in respect of uh, male children, they are covered up to the attainment of 25 years. Initially, it was 18 years because of uh, the representations that at 18 years of age, children will still be working, uh, sorry, uh, studying. Uh, it was extended up to 21. Now it has been extended up to 25 years. Then uh, unemployment is part of uh, the life of a average uh, wage worker. So in the course of uh, any unemployment, which happens because of the uh, lockout or retrenchment or uh, incapacity, because he is incapacitated, uh, incapacitated and his uh, loss, uh, his in disability is uh, more than 40%, then this person is entitled for retirement also. And this person will get under, there are two schemes available. Rajiv Gandhi Shramik Kalyan Yojana and uh, Atal Bhimit Vyakti Kalyan Yojana. Under uh, Rajiv Gandhi Shramik Kalyan Yojana, the workers will get the compensation for a period of uh, 24 months, 2 years. First 12 months, they will get a compensation at the rate of 50% of their wages. And for the second half of the uh, period, that is in the next 12 months, they will get it at 25% uh, of their wages. Under Atal Bhimit Vekti Kalyan Yojana, that is once in a lifetime, and it is paid for 90 days in case of uh, uh, such closure, where the uh, retirement is not because of any suspension or discipline reaction or any <coughs> such eventuality. And uh, one more thing which even we covet, but we don't get is, ward of IP certificate, that is the children of these workers will get a, uh, uh, some seats in the, for MBBS courses. In the institutions run by the corporation, there are eight institutions currently being run by a corporation and in these eight institutions, the, uh, uh, the wards of the workers, they will get the opportunity to get a seat. We have seen so many number of uh, uh, these uh, uh, children uh, get into these institutions, pass out, and then uh, they are now serving the corporation. Uh, then there is also a vocational rehabilitation scheme, wherein due to disability, a person uh, cannot, can no more continue in his existing uh, uh, profession. So he is trained in a different vocation. And this entire charge is borne by the corporation and fully or at the rate of 123 rupees per day, whichever is higher. If the charges uh, is higher, then that charges is uh, born. Having heard you, Mr. Renuka Prasad ji, I think the in-depth detail which you have shared with us is really, really good. And having heard the success stories from all stakeholders in the panel, I think the flip side, that is our major concern is, is this reaching and is the awareness being consumed by the end consumer well? How much are we able to reach out there? Having said that, I would like to address to the panel and starting with you, Mr. Prasad, what are some of the innovative initiatives and reforms which you would like to share that you are creating to build awareness 
I mean, all of this what you've said, somewhere, some things we all know. But how is the awareness being created in the larger segment of the society, end user access to information and privilege to getting immediate solutions is what we are addressing now. Uh, well, with regard to immediate uh, redressal of, uh, in case of any solutions, we have a public grievance uh, mechanism uh, wherein it is closely monitored uh, both uh, at the headquarters level and also our level and any grievances are settled. In so far as uh, the awareness of the scheme goes, the awareness is there because uh, the awareness is also there and uh, the our corporation is also conducting frequent awareness camps in various uh, out, outer districts of the state of Telangana. And uh, last year I think we conducted four <coughs> to five awareness camps, one in Cherlapalli Industrial Area uh, Employees Association. And uh, generally we approach the Employees Association because through the associations we will be in a position to uh, attract large audiences and because one employer means there will be hundreds of employees. So making aware one employer will spread the awareness. So that is why we are uh, uh, conducting these awareness camps and uh, uh, I feel all efforts are being made but still I think we can still improve and uh, we can still improve. Yes, definitely. I resonate with the fact that yes, we have a lot of scope of awareness building which is needing to be worked on largely. Over to you, sir. Mr. Fani. Uh, first thing we are doing is we are sending bulk SMSs to all our beneficiaries whenever we have a new initiative. And uh, we are holding every month uh, health webinars. So, wherein uh, anybody from anywhere in India can join. I think around 10,000 people capacity it is and we are going to increase it. <coughs> then uh, we are holding panchayat meetings every two months where we are calling all the stakeholders. We have the pension associations, serving associations, we have the ALCs, the authorized local committee who supplies the LP medicines. We have uh, representatives from the hospitals and we address their grievances. Uh, as a part of uh, Government department, we also address the PMO grievances, we have CP grams. Apart that, we also have a separate grievance system wherein every beneficiary can log in in our website using his uh, mobile number and lodge his grievance and these grievances are being cleared every day and every week. Okay? And then uh, we have uh, advisory committee meetings and zonal advisory committee meetings. Uh, advisory committee meetings are conducted at wellness center level. And journal advisory committee meetings we are going to start from this month, wherein uh, we will have two uh, pensioner representatives and one area welfare officer who will be from the serving side. And these people will be part of the committee which reviews the way our organization is functioning. So it's not just about the listening to their grievances and solving them, but they will also be part of the functioning of the organization, how we are improving our services, how we are implementing our policies. I think that's really commendable work that's happening. I'm sure that when we do our Q&A session after the speaking of Mr. Ramakrishna, I'm sure we will share the open house and we'll get more feedback on that. Over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. So essentially, uh, our traditionally, the, the client of NABH has been the hospitals. So they are very well aware about us. But as far as the creating demand from the consumer, the actual patient is concerned, this is one area where uh, I'll admit we have been not focusing upon, but now we have taken it upon ourselves to create demand from the patient, from the consumer directly and we'll be soon launching a very <coughs> massive media campaign, focus campaign, so that we can go to the next uh, orbit and the actual on-ground demand can be generated by when the patients start visiting a hospital and start demanding quality. See, the theme of the workshop is quality and affordable health care. So, affordable health care insurance industry will definitely take care. They are penetrating, they are creating products which are very friendly and very pocket friendly and 
ultimately, as you said, we aspire to reach to every 143 billion of our citizen, whether through government enterprise or private enterprise, uh, it will reach. But what about quality? So quality is the thing which NABH can address and a significant push will come when the patients start demanding quality. And, and they say, uh, currently they are thankful just to receive the treatment. Suppose a poor person goes to AIMS or a, or a private, uh, like a public funded facility, they are just thankful that they have received. So no longer I think that will work. Going forward, uh, I think uh, public funded facilities are as answerable to the consumer or the common citizen as a private uh, player is. So, so we'll need to work on that and we, we welcome your suggestions, guidance and um, John sir is also guiding us. So I think going forward there's lots of scope here and we realize now that only way we can push the demand and go to the next orbit of accreditation certificate is by creating a consumer demand. Earlier in the day, I think one of the panelists had addressed that all stakeholders are working in their closed box approach and not at the end of, and now everybody's target is the consumer should be satisfied. So consumer satisfaction is top line for everybody. But the point is, they don't come into the same perspective and those perspectives is what at FTCCI we are trying to initiate and bring about a resonance and coming together to make an effective reformation platform. And I'm sure with stakeholders like all of them on the panel, things will change and we, we will be the change makers. Yeah, thank things? you. I think this is the uh, moment to congratulate once again FTCCI because this is a fantastic initiative bringing all of us together and under one roof and deliberating and discussing. So compliments to the leadership. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, at Oregasri, one uh, thing that has been there from inception till today is that all discharge patients are uh, addressed a letter signed by the uh, Chief Minister to give a reply about any grievance that they have. It's a self-addressed, uh, I mean, trust-addressed uh, letter which is there in it. And all the replies that come are audited. And recently, in uh, 2019, there is another activity that we have done. Once the patient gets discharged, a IVRS message goes to a particular person saying that are you satisfied with your service? If you are satisfied, press 1. If you are not satisfied, press 2. If there is any money collection, press 1. If there is no money collection, press 2. So sort of an act activity has been started and then where we have found that about the reply rate was around 85% uh, uh, of the people only. But then the satisfaction rate was in the range of about 87%. So the other 30% whatever was not there was, there was a misunderstanding in punching the keys, that is around another uh, 6%. So this is one thing, but truly, what is the level of satisfaction of the beneficiary, that's one issue which we need to address. I think from the inputs from uh, FTC, we'll take it up further. Thanks for the input. Thank you so much for recognizing the efforts at FTCCI. As an industry body, always we are uh, addressing the fact that we bring industry reformations for the progressive perspective and that's the very intent of FTCCI. Having said that, I'm opening the house for questions. I already have a question uh, written and sent to me by Mr. Praveen from Bangalore. Can I have, yeah, yes Mr. Praveen, would you like to address the question yourself please? Yeah. This is a question to Dr. Atil Mohan. There are regulatory bodies for insurance like IRDA, for banks, RBI, so I would like to know if uh, is there a plan for a regulatory body for hospitals? No, there are so many regulatory bodies already. Actually, why do you want another one? Uh, so regulation, since, uh, since regulation are, is mandatory. Regulation, there are already. If we were to think very uh, like literally, there are I think there are 180 thing, 83 clearances which you require to run a hospital starting from registration to BMW to fire safety. So all these are registrations. While, while NABH like standards are voluntary, they are little aspirational. They are patient safety. Yeah. So, so this, is, uh, this is a voluntary, but government incentivizes this. Whoever, which, whichever organization takes the, completes the standard 
gets the certificate is incentivized to the tune of 5%, 10%, 15% based on their level of certification. So government, there's a push by the government towards quality. So we are speaking about quality because quality cannot be made mandatory. There are countries like Australia and maybe India's time will come. Uh, Australia has made it mandatory. There are many other countries which have made it mandatory. But worldwide majority of the countries have kept it voluntary. I would like to know if uh, the government of India has a, has a data of hospitals like the number of uh, hospitals registered because the registration happens at municipal level also. Yeah. Whether that has reached the government of India. I think that has Thank been you. the bane of India because health, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, has been the state subject in the constitution list. So each state is working differently. So that, that kind of has created a massive confusion. So what is prevalent here may not be prevalent across the border. So going forward, I think we all realize that we need a central sponsored scheme and Ayushman Bharat is one such right step in the direction. NHA, we work very closely with NHA also. And NHA, we are delivering so many policies and other things. All standards are currently incorporating all four tenets of ABDM also. And NHA also under the PMJ recognizes the uh, our certificate as a co-terminus basis. Uh, I'd like to add on that ABDM point that Sarah has just mentioned. So under ABDM, uh, the central government is working on creating a repository of all the health professionals and all hospitals. So and the, every citizen of this country is going to get an ABBA health account. So I think uh, one of the person has questioned in the morning session that why don't we have one account which has all the health details and entire health history. Uh, the work has already started. I think very soon it will be completed. And very soon we are going to have one health account where the entire health data of every citizen will be stored and can be accessed anywhere across India. So in the Indian context of very soon, what is the approximation of that? Uh, on a lighter note, I'm sure you all will want to know. Uh, you know, uh, they have given us a target of one month and the one month we have already missed by five months due to technical reasons. <laughs> So, 2024 for sure. 2024 for sure. So, there are many software issues and technical issues. Yeah, that yeah, let, just let me add to that. That's a very important point. There are four tenets of ABDM. One is ABA number, uh, Ayushman Bharat Health Account. That is ABA number. One is Health Facility Registry, Health Professional Registry. And the fourth important thing is interoperability. But this is a very complex environment. Uh, government has already implemented it in 32,000 hospitals. Uh, under the public funded scheme, but private hospitals may or may not, they are being incentivized. So this may take a lot more time, but there is a parallel thing where ABDM or we NABH, at NABH we have already integrated all the four tenets in our standards. We are also doing the validation for all the EMR software which are currently available in India market. There are 600 plus software. So NABH is already, has already started the scheme for validation of such EMR, HIMS and LIMS software, which are, we are doing. I will have to uh, take a few more questions. So I think uh, gentlemen here. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Chaturvedi. I do cancer care, Swastava cancer care. We do uh, cancer awareness and screening in rural areas. I have two questions to ask. One is to our friend in uh, uh, Arugishri. Why there is no provision for investigations before admission. Any private hospital, cancer patient, if you have to admit, they will ask for diagnosis. For diagnosis, there is no provision in uh, RA Actually, why, is, why is that? Actually, it is like this, sir. The workup that has been done, once the confirmation of diagnosis is made, that is factored into the package that is there for the treatment for the case. It is not true that there is no package exclusively. There is true that there is no exclusive package for investigation. But once the workup is done, that amount is taken into consideration for the treatment part. That's so what is the concept. For the last five Sorry. years I am working on this. One minute. I made so, so many representations. Yes. I am very happy you said it is increased from 2 lakhs to 5 lakhs. Yes. It is it's excellent. Yes. Please see that diagnosis also is included one moment. so that people do not suffer. One moment. I have one question for... One moment. One yes. moment. Yes. Another small component. Yes, sir. 
uh, right now for all the uh, in, a, in some time it is going to come, come for the diagnostic workup already because uh, yeah, Aishman Bharat PM, uh, Prime Minister Jan Aragyojana is having investigative packages which are likely to be included under Telangana. It, it does not have. Even Aishman Bharat does not have. It, it has, has got, it has got, not even for past year. I know about it. Okay, so I'll... So this is, this is one. Now, yeah. I, I, I'm kindly, kindly go through that. I'll also be in touch with you. I'm taking your number now. I'll come and meet you in the office. I have one question for our friend from CGHS. Why CGHS patients are not admitted in private hospitals? I'm telling you, I worked in private hospitals. CGHS patients are not admitted. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes. Sir, uh, we have a given system. This is something that keeps happening because we have low rates. No hospital would like to admit 100% uh, of their beds CGHS patients. So there would al always be a situation where the hospital would say we don't have beds. So uh, whenever you have the issue, you have a mobile number of a nodal officer. We have a doctor who is handling it. And he will be able to guide the beneficiary to the right hospital. Yeah. Can can I? Can I, madam? Yes, of course, sir. Yeah. I'm Dr. Singh. Uh, I'm very happy, first of all, to be an Indian. Second, to staying in Telangana as well. And luckily, we are privileged to have so many schemes, so many benefits, so many uh, programs and all those things for the people. And uh, we have people sitting on the dais who have got very good ideas about it. But here, I am not pointing out at anybody, please don't take it seriously or don't take it on any one of you. Uh, there were so many questions which have come. I will start with the ESI thing. Uh, the sensitization and awareness is very, very poor. People don't know what are the things they have to go through that. And in case of my two, three employees also, they have not got the money still back. She died during COVID and all, that's one part of it. Now the second is during admission also, we had a lot of difficulties in admitting the patient in the ESI because I had to go at two o'clock in the morning to admit the patient in ESI. Spent two hours there sitting in the rooms. That was one. So not complaining about everybody, but system can be improved. Now about the other thing, like, uh, uh, CGHS. CGHS, I had, we have about 40, 45 beds. I tried a lot. I went to Delhi also. I went to the minister. There was a local minister. I went to his house. Then he asked money for that. I said, to him, I can't afford the money. We are ready to serve. Then so third is, so yeah. How minute. long is your question? No, just, no, enough, enough, enough. Just one, one point only. So everybody wants, we want to uh, help out the people as he asked. So Chakravarti Garo has said, Ke, private, we want to do that as well. Now the third thing is about the NABH, it's a very good program, but different assessors have got different land, this thing, observation things, which is again very difficult. And same applies to Arugishri, we tried then again, same again bribe there. So we refused and so came you back. Are Thank you. Uh, just to, just to bring awareness and correct the systems. Yeah. Thank you. you. addressing the same perspective, which we are also kind of opening discussions for. Yes, sir, please go ahead with your question. Madam, I want to ask a question. Your good name, uh, sir. My name is A.V.S. Dikshit. I am representing uh, CATCO, Confederation of All Telangana Consumer Organizations. So, first question is to Ram Garu. Sir, recently from March 1st onwards, there is a link, linkage in, uh, of uh, ration cards to Aishman Bhava cards. Do you know that? See, the food security card, what I mentioned, yes. are they on the basis of that only the... Uh, they are doing linkage. Yes, are but suddenly, uh, March 30th, they stopped the linkages. What is the reason? Linkage between Aishman Bharat cards and uh, this thing you are detailing, sir? Yes, cards. This uh, uh, food security cards. Security from 30th onwards, from 30th March onwards. I think you can take this offline yeah. we'll because this is not relevant to the panel yeah. session. Madam, uh, another more question is there, madam. Re regarding this, because Aishman card is, uh, there is a um, uh, problem is there that I want to ask. 
second second of march one patient admitted in durga bal deshmukh hospital sir regarding uh, heart uh, problem they have uh, done surgery and uh, second time also she got uh, uh, again uh, uh, heart problem at that time they informed the uh, uh, hospital people informed us they have to pay the amount 35000 is it correct or not no it is not correct there is no need to pay any thing if they have a uh, receipt of that it will be reimbursed no problem one, one, one more question to uh, sir is there any scheme for uh, self employment people for uh, in esi no for uh, self employed as on date uh, they are not covered under social security code 2020 they will be covered yeah social security code on social security 2020 and the fact self employed workers are covered uh, presently under the esi act uh, self employed workers are not covered Uh, however the code on social security 2020 has uh, uh, covered all classes of employment and all classes of establishments yep. social security code yeah they, uh, earlier there were around 17 to 18 uh, labor laws all have been uh, amalgamated into four codes one of the code is the social security code in which uh, self employed uh, employees are also eligible for coverage Uh, the implementation is uh, pending because of uh, uh, a dispute by the uh, workers unions and uh, i believe that uh, the government will take is it something to do with the shram card uh, uh, yes the employees who are uh, registered under e shram portal will be part of that most of the time i am getting feedback from uh, citizens that the, uh, they are trying to get to the portal to get themselves registered and they are finding it very difficult very to do that. yes why is it what is, can you give any uh, i think that uh, pertains to the labor department which uh, uh, pmj prime minister jan arogya yojana uh, it's a separate uh, scheme run by the uh, department of labor not uh, no i was just not, uh, yeah. contemplating i was just thinking okay. that could be in the coming months we should hold some camps and if you can help us in organizing those camps to help the self employed people to get this registration done because you see many individuals like the person who helped me in my house he is a self employed person he is covered now after lot of our representation to the government he has got covered now he has got covered but he is not getting covered how can we help that uh sir i'll take up this issue with uh, my other colleagues in the department of labor because recently we are having a coordinating uh, coordination meetings amongst all the various departments under under the department of labor so that uh, meeting is scheduled for next week or uh, the uh, first week of may invite ftcci into those meetings my suggestion uh if you can i will take up that issue in the during that meeting and then uh, get it uh, uh, resolved sir so and i'll get back on this issue can you good introduce yourself please yeah, good afternoon everyone uh, i'm sakish and uh, i i'm working as an insurance uh, service <coughs> provider uh, for the last uh, uh, a decade or so in uh, hyderabad city uh, my question is to uh, dr atul mohan sir um, in india sir uh, i would like to know from you what percentage of the hospitals has so far been given the uh, nabh accreditation and do you also have any goal as to you know you should be reaching this number of or this percentage of uh, accreditation by certain period of time as such yeah that's my kra actually you know how to so uh, if we, we we run programs under three broad headings of accreditation certification and empanelment uh, accreditation we currently have 3300 uh, fully accredited hospitals including ayush setups i i believe we have a share of 95% of these hospitals these are multi speciality more than 50 bedded uh, pan india we i i truly believe that data will prove me right as far as the small hospitals are concerned that number nobody knows i think sir also uh, india.gov gives a figure of 1 lakh hospitals 100000 rohini portal of irdai mentions 33000 hospitals right so they, nobody has that clear number but out of that small number i i believe they count every nursing home as also a hospital 
we have about 11,000 hospital under the certification scheme. Uh, and under the impanelment scheme, which we deliver on behalf of Ministry of Defense and Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, the CGHS and the ECHS, uh, we have about 4,200 hospitals. There may be some overlap also uh, in the small healthcare, but uh, currently, so that is the figure. So nobody has a clear idea about a census of the hospitals in India, the definition of a hospital in India. So that also maybe somebody needs to take up. Yeah, but but we we aim for growth, and we have set ourselves a target like from 17,000 to 50,000 over next two years. That is our own target, and uh, we we hope that we'll reach that, and we are working very very proactively towards that. Uh, good evening, uh, uh, gentlemen and, and sir. Uh, my name is Ankit Acharya. I am from Future Generally General Insurance. I head the health uh, health claims business there. Uh, so, taking on the point where the gentleman said and talked about the regulation. See, I think the point is we are all sitting here to look at quality and affordability. We are five, seven, eight large key stakeholders in the room and we are talking about how do we come together. There is a basic fundamental question which I think is the elephant in the room. The reason why all the insurance fraternity is together here because we have got a leader. That leader is IRDAI. The point of governance and regulation is not only to tell what to do, it's also to tell what not to do and what will happen if you don't do it. There's also to, there also is a consolidation and a deterrence and a direction. Now the point is, sir, if we all have to come together, especially from the provider perspective, you know, the biggest problem that we face is that we talk to whom? Do I talk to Apollo? Do I talk to Fortis? Who is that one person that we talk to who is not only that person who is bringing them together but also regulates them? Who is that central body to whom the, the hospitals will report into? Unless we have that central body, the two large stakeholders, the, the money payer and the cost generator can never be solved, sir. So what is, what is the view of the forum, sir, on that perspective? Categorization of hospitals according to the cities it should be there so the insurance fraternity can survive either intermediary because we are the main uh, chain of the uh, both insurance companies as well as the hospitals. So we need a categorization of the hospitals and a regulator of the hospitals. Just like the IRT. Sir, so, so both these questions are excellent. Uh, I think what you are referring to is grading and rating and ranking of hospitals. We have already developed such a scheme about two years back at, at the insistence of NHA. As you would know that NHA enrolls small hospitals and most of the big private hospitals are not part of the ABPMJ. So they wanted like hospitals like Apollo, Medanta, Max, Fortis also to come under and their HPP2 also was very low. The health benefit package was very low. So they NHA asked us to create a scheme. We created a scheme, submitted there, but then the Honorable Minister thought that the scheme, its time may not be very right. But that future will also come. We are working on not only rating and ranking of hospitals, but also of the doctors as somebody mentioned. Best doctors of Telangana, let's say. So that will also be there. Thank you. We already have that scheme. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Then let, me, let me answer then. Maybe it has answered your question. No, no. This is a different question. Oh my. Give me one and uh, with our friend from Aragishri again, don't think I'm attacking you. See, <laughs> there is a reason for my talk. See, if, if awareness is created about cancer, 50% of the can cases can be saved. Madam has been asking right from the first, uh, what is the awareness you are creating? Are you joining us to create some awareness among people so that we can save some lives together? Sir, uh, suggestion taken, sir. We will we'll work about it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll work out. Very good. Yes, because it's always work in progress. Anyway, what, what I want to answer is, you see, first of all, let's give a big hand to the participants who have raised excellent questions. Let's give a good hand. Because, uh, uh, because without, 
without those questions, this session would have been extremely boring. So let me uh, first congratulate Sir, you all. Members, they understand. Yeah, number one. <laughs> number two, number two, number two. You see, I, what I want to uh, share with all of you is, is very simple, is that as we all know, because we all are part of the Indian constitution, that health is a state subject. And the state is the regulator. It is simple. We have a regulator which is the state. Let get, let's get that in our mind. That is the first thing. The second thing you must understand is, after 20 years of struggle, way back in 2010, we got a law which is called Clinical Establishment Act. I don't know how many of you know about it. Yes. But there is a law. So the states were the overall regulator. Then we said, this will not do like what you asked. Who should I report to? How do I report? We brought in a law called Clinical Establishment Act. Today we are in 2023. 18 states have notified it. Not even single have implemented it till now. The bo bottom line which I am trying to convey to you all is, and this is what is the objective of today's and tomorrow's session is, increase your voice in terms of the frequency of your message that we need immediately the Clinical Establishment Act to be made implementable. Now, 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 before you, I must share with you all, otherwise it will not be fair on my part to not tell you all that why it is not happening. You all must know that. And most of you will know that also within yourself, but you don't want to speak, but let me speak. Because many things you can't speak, but I can speak. I have that liberty. And many things I can't speak, you can speak. Or he can speak, but I can't speak. But what I am trying to tell you is, what I can speak is, first let's understand that we all need to be accountable and transparent. There was no clap. <laughs> oh my God, there was no clap. We all first need to be accountable and transparent. That is the most important issue and that is the objective of this which we are uh, happening. I am very happy to see the dawn of, or what should I say, the icon uh, of the uh, medical devices manufacturer's body present here today, uh, uh, Mr. Rajiv Nath. Wonderful to have you with us. You see, what I want to tell you all is that everybody, you know, which is representing here in this one day's uh, two, and one and a half day's conversation, everybody has got a power. Let's bring that power under one roof. And let's all speak together with one voice. Then only you can be heard. If you speak in fragmented areas, and if you work in silos, you will never be able to achieve what we want to achieve. And if we want to achieve affordable health care, which is of high quality, made accessible to all, without any discrimination, let's become accountable and transparent. Thank you very much. Please close. A, a big thank, close thank you to the panelists. Thank you for open heart acceptance that yes, awareness must be created and it's the need of the art. And I'm sure that all of you have accepted the submission and we must come together offline and work in the trenches along with FTCCI and the committee working on this initiative and making the Vision 2030 a reality. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, sirs and ma'am. Thank you all. I think that was a very insightful and intuitive session. Many questions which were answered and many questions which came up. But I think it was a very good session overall. And uh, may I please request on stage Mr. Rajiv Kumar Gupta, President PB Fintech Limited, Policy Bazaar and Paisa Bazaar, to please come on stage and hand over the mementos. Thank you.
हम ही हम से न लें ऐसा कभी ना हो हम आपको दे दें अच्छा ले जाना नहीं करेगा we done with two very wonderful sessions we now move on to our session number 3 the session is going to be on the role of intermediaries and technology providers to be more customer friendly the session will be moderated by mr r balasundaram secretary general insurance brokers association of india He is an experienced general insurance professional with over three decades of proven track record in the industry. Also possessing in-depth knowledge of the Indian market, with marine cargo being a passion. May I please invite you on stage, sir? May I also invite the speakers, Mr. Lokesh K C, Convener, Confederation of General Insurance Agents Association of India, currently Secretary General of Indian Federation of General Insurance Agents Associations, Mr. Sohan Lal Kadel. MD Cadell Insurance Brokers Private Limited Mr Sohanlal Cadell Director with Cadell Insurance Brokers Private Limited is registered with the Ministry of Corporate Affairs May I also welcome Mr Srikant Charan Mudigonda MD Good Health Insurance TPA Limited Underwriting and Claims Business Development and Key Account Management in the general insurance sector Mr Rajiv Kumar Gupta President PB Fintech Limited Policy Bazaar in Paisa Bazaar So as an experienced executive director with a demonstrated history of work in the insurance industry So good afternoon everyone uh, it's been a pleasure being here and uh, given the opportunity of interacting with you all and especially with my esteemed panel So at the outset, I would like to set the context right. When we talk about what we call about quality and affordable health care for all, insurance, health insurance, is a subset of this. Let us not forget. So let us not confuse the issue, saying that all issues are directed at insurance companies, the intermediaries, the providers, the hospitals. health care is overarching under which insurance is a subsection and now coming to the topic which we are going to discuss among ourselves is role of intermediaries and technology providers to be more customer friendly so having made the initial distinction the role of intermediaries and technology providers relates only to the insurance aspect not to the overall overarching impact of health care provision okay we also need to contribute to the vision of a health care provision for everybody but that is a thing but here the part we are going to discuss is how can intermediaries be more customer friendly so in all our discussions the customer i don't use the word patient here i'm using the word customer a citizen of india how can we make it more customer friendly so what is the answer we need to understand what the customer wants so my first question will be directed to all the panelists beginning with you lokesh in very crisp words what does the customer want in terms of health so thanks to the fpc sir for inviting me for this session so if you, if you ask me what will be the customers delight i can say in three phases uh, easy boarding that's taking the policy in time of need the policy should be there and policy should be there for life long wonderful over to you so the customer service or the customer expectations 
are normally into three parts. One is the pre-sales, one is the sales and another is the post-sales. When we talk about the pre-sales, probably the customer has to be explained since you are, we are talking with reference to or in context of the insurance, all the fine print, what is there, what is not there, what is the expectation, what are his requirements, how does it suit. Sales, so giving him the right product at an affordable price. When we talk about post sales, where the role of TPS like me comes in, where we meet his requirements, when he actually has a claim. Anybody buys an insurance only for the sake of a claim. So when he buys, has a claim, at that point of time, are we with him or not? Having said that, customer service is, or customer friendly, is not being liberal. We need to be quick, transparent, fair and just. Uh, just a slight twist to the question. It is not about what we have to do. The question was about what a customer expects when he buys a health insurance policy. First thing, what does he want? Like you said very rightly, he wants protection and prompt service in case of a claim. Definitely yes. And the top word needs to be explained to him. Transparency, or make awareness. Current sir, same question. What does the customer expect when you go to send him a health insurance policy? No, customer, first of all, think that uh, it rate or premium or cost of the product should be the lowest, number one. Definitely, any, any customer goes in the market, either the insurance or anything else, they will try to, to see that, uh, how to optimize the cost, number one. Second thing, a friend in need. The need for the patient having a policy, it is a question of his life and death. And he expects from the intermediary, either it is an agent or a TPA or a broker, that someone along with his family, someone should stand there in a, at the time of he is in distress and what possible help we can do. Even And it is happening also. Even our fraternity, they are going to hospital, attending the patients and uh, talking to the particular uh, uh, staff of the hospital and doing and this is expected and we should be, as again I repeat, a friend in need. We should be a friend in need. So I think uh, agreeing to a lot of things which fellow panelists have said, the first thing what I would say sir the customer expects is transparency and integrity from the intermediary who goes to meet him. You know? I mean are we sharing all the facts which we need to share? Are we trying to actually understand what he already has, what his family has for recommending a product? You know? And when he actually goes for a claim, will he face a rejection? That's the trust which he wants to you know, uh, have from us that as intermediaries, that please tell me what I should do correct so that when I go for a claim, I don't face a rejection. We have done a survey for, especially for this Health Vision 2030 conference. Uh, we have reached to more than uh, 5,000 agents across the country and uh, we have got a feedback. Can we have the PPT, please? So, what are the top expectations? Yeah, I, I, we will go through, sir. There are only seven or eight slides, are there? We will go through. Next slide, please. Yeah. So, difficulties faced during marketing. This product information availability is not there. Okay. Then, it's regarding very high premiums. <coughs> the common question we face is about GST on health insurance, 18%, which is highest in the world. We have written to the Prime Minister, we have written to the Finance Minister, we have met several times Finance Minister. She has assured us that it will be brought down to 12%. But our demand is for everyone, it should be 5% without any input tax credit and for senior citizens, it should be exempted. Fair enough, Pokesh, I take all these points. I am sure people would identify with all these points. The point we are discussing here is how can <coughs> intermediaries or technology take care of these customer expectations? So the first thing is product information availability. Yes, we can definitely do it. We should do it. We are doing it. Very high premiums. I think that's a very standard question which Kadeem Saab also pointed out. Mujhe kitna sasta milega is the question. Sir, unfortunately... There, does the intermediary have a role? 
most of the time intermediaries explain to the client. No, no, I, I'm just asking to public at large, saying that so intermediaries alone cannot pave the way for sorting all these ills of the customer. Like for example, is there a GST? That is something we can push as a body to the government. 18% is too high. We need to bring it down. But coming back to the basic point, high premium. It's a question of affordability, he says. And we are talking about quality and affordable health care for all. Remember the theme. Quality, yes, we saw in the previous panel discussions how they are ensuring quality. And we heard some success stories about uh, limited areas where that success has been achieved, quality health care at affordable prices. So I think the main mindset of this discussion should be, can this be scaled up? Now, if an intermediary has to bring in a lower premium always, is it in his hands? It depends on the manufacturer, which is the insurance company. So I think you need to look at the whole problem holistically. An insurance company says, I can give you a good cover, but if I were to do that, I am a commercial organization, I need to make profits as well. So I cannot price it to suit the affordability of every Indian citizen, which is his state, which is right. Hospitals, when their treatment happens, they came out today morning saying that, uh, intermediaries do this. So we keep pointing fingers at each other. Now hospitals also, if they have to provide quality health care, they also need money. They are also a commercial organization. So the basic problem which needs to be addressed is balance between a commercial objective and a societal obligation. <coughs> so coming to the next question which I would say that the role of the other stakeholders become important. So what can we do when a customer wants only a cheap product? Lokesh. Can you complete your slide? Yes, sir. I want to see what... Yes, sir. This uh, EPM structure, most of the people are complaining about chips and other things. Now, even in General Issues Council, there is a talk that there should be a common network, hmm. should be uh, there in the country where the entire industry will be having a common network, whether it's private companies or government companies. Then, sir, GMC bank assurance tailor made policies, which is ruining the market, that should not be there. Then, increasing in hospital tie ups for more cash facilities, I think now uh, industry body is going to take a stand where uh, the cashless cases should be around 90 to 95 percent. Next slide, please. Lokesh, if I may play the devil's advocate here, if a bank assurance policy is cheaper for the client than what a broker can offer or an individual agent can offer. Yes, Why will I, he not go with it? I'll, I'll come to that, sir. I'll come to that. Uh, if banks, uh, which is policy they are, they are selling at the bank, it's cheaper, I agree. But who is, who is paying for it? It's the retail customer. No, no. Sir, if you, if you go and, if you go and seek the information through RTI with any of the PSUGIC banks, PSUGIC insurance companies, have they sold any GMC to banks? They say, no, they have not done anything. Hmm. What is the last ratio? They don't disclose. The window dressing of this, all the balance sheets of most of the companies is happening. We know, everybody knows. Everybody in the hall, in this auditorium, especially insurance professionals, knows that GMC is a last making business. And in the parliament, <coughs> and in the parliament, CAG has placed this report in last five years, PSU GICs have lost more than 32,000 crores because of GMCs. How long? How long we will be cross-subsidizing this process? Okay. We need to take a stand. Right. So, what we suggested is, just the group businesses, questions will take at the end. It's Robbie Peter to pay Paul. Please, Prashant, we'll take questions at the end. So, the point remains here that health business, health insurance business goes into two broad categories as many of you know. One is the group health insurance which corporates buy and where the pricing is so flexible for the sake of top line insurers do use it, the cross subsidizing it with the individual retail premiums. 
and individual retail premiums are standardized and you can change it only once in three years, four years, something like that. So the individual customer is at a distinct disadvantage. Very valid point. And now I'll ask the next question on this to you, Srikant. Many hospitals, now we are talking about, we are not talking about the sales now, we are coming to the customer who has already purchased a policy. And I was one of them. So let me narrate my brief example. My wife had a small surgery, so I went to a hospital under a group policy. My employer had a group policy to begin with. So the cashless limit was sanctioned immediately, not an issue at all. But when I go to the hospital, the hospital says you pay me a deposit of 25,000 rupees. I said, okay, I paid it. Treatment over next day. Hospitals take at least half a day for billing. And typically, they ensure that you are discharged after 12 noon because of full days are discharged. This is a fact. And I am speaking as a customer now here, not as a uh, moderator. So then what happens is, they take another three to four hours to collate all the documents and send it to the TPA. They say I have to collect it from different stakeholders and um, we have to scan it and send it. Okay, it went to the TPA and because I was under a group I could push it. The TPA also approved the amount within two hours. I got the approval. Then comes the surprise. The approval had some 20,000 rupees deduction. So at the time of discharge, hospital says you pay me the 20,000. I said, why my friend, I have given you a deposit, adjust from that and give me. He says, no sir. That I am retaining because the insurance company is going to pay me after 45 days. So that you should collect later. For this you pay the 20,000 now. Now my question to you Srikant is, I despite being in the industry and used my influence there honestly, pushed it and got it into our... What happens to a common man with a retail policy in such circumstances? And the second question is, what does the TPA actually verify when you are a network hospital, you have given the approval for an estimated amount, what is it that you verify? You verify only what are the amounts I have to disallow, is it not? So why begin on the negative note of disallowing? So how can we overcome this? How can we speed up the procedure? moment is the doctor signifies that the patient is ready for discharge, the discharge should happen within an hour. So where is the hitch? What is the problem you face from other stakeholders? No, let us be. We are waiting for him. Sir, this uh, typically I think uh, most part of my answer you have already given. Okay, this yours is an absolutely exceptional case, but I talk about most common cases. In fact, most of that, what I'm going to say, you already said. Typically, in fact, I put my own example again, similar to this. Very few months back, I had a bad fall. I was admitted to one of the top hospitals. Morning, the doctor is a good friend of mine. He came for rounds around 10, 10 30. He said, Okay, he's fine now. He can be discharged. 10, 10 30. I was just fully waiting and uh, two hours passed, they didn't know who I am, so like the way, so they said, nice idea, we have sent a request to the TPA, they have not yet responded. <laughs> I said, good enough? I said, good enough? So, of course, I checked with the consent TPA, of course, unfortunately, or fortunately, that was not, not with us, it was with some other TPA and all of us are friends, they said, and I checked my mobile and you know, most of the TPS, they have an SMS system. The moment they receive a request for the final art, it has automated SMS triggers. So the, mo the moment it hits our mailbox, an SMS goes, we received your authorization. It's not a process, but it is received. I checked my mobile, it was not there. I checked with that lady, she was very nice. Sir, we are still waiting, sir. Now, what happens, as uh, uh, Mr. Balsundan rightly said, they first have to prepare a discharge summary. They have to go to the concerned doctor, get his signature. If the doctor is in operation theater or he's in OP, etc., they wait outside for signature. Meanwhile, they have to collect bills from everybody, collate them, put them, and whatever their internal process. It, I'm, not, I'm not questioning that. They have their own, the way I have my internal process, the hospitals have their own internal process. It takes two hours, three hours, four hours, whatever it is inside, and then it goes to the TPA. 
95% of the times, at least I am quoting from my own example, my own TPS example, 95% of the time the final auth goes within one hour. Exceptions, why and all, there can be any reason. They, they go in less than one hour. Now, the, the challenge here is the communication. Now, the patient starts getting disturbed saying that the TPA is not giving me authorization, TPA is not giving me authorization. So, my request is that what we have to try to create awareness amongst people is when you get admitted into the hospital, please ensure that your own mobile number is entered in the cash trust request form. Okay. Many times I saw that the message went, but the mobile number there was of hospital help desk. Patient is in dark, he is not available. I am not saying everybody is doing, but as someone said, there are a few black sheep here and there, or maybe the person who is entering did not have the number, whatever are the reasons. The moment this is there, wait, you have, if you have not received within a reasonable time any TPA, the, the message that the cashless authorization request is received, please follow up with the hospital, why it has not gone? You can chase the TPA. I am not saying the TPAs are always right, every time they 100% they do within one hour, I am sorry, I am not saying that there are, there could be gaps in that. So, this is the primary reason what happens. So, okay. your second question, what you said is, what do you check? So final art, normally there will not be much of a checking. We just check whether what is given the initial art, final art, they are in the sink or not. Like I have, first the request came for appendicitis, now a hysterectomy is happening. That should not happen. <laughs> so that is, the, that is the first thing. Second, whatever final bill they have charged as per the tariff or not, are they ready not the available items? This is a simple check that is done and so 95% of the times it will not uh, there, there will not be delay more than, I am not talking about me, any of the TPAs, I am talking about the whole of TPA industry because I am part of the insurance industry for almost 35 years now, having worked with both public sector, private sector, I have seen every day. But it is more of a perception than there is a delay from the TPS. No, I said, no, no, in fact, in my question itself, I prefaced it saying that I got the approval in time, that is not the answer. See, it's not because you, <coughs> no, even the common man. So the primary question is, why should there be a deduction? It is a network hospital which has been approved by you, by you, Matlab, the insurance company taking care of all the things. Why should the hospital bill some unwarranted items and why should you disallow them? One. Second question, if at all it is going to be there, like for a consumable or a doctor visit or whatever you call it, can we look at a smarter way so that the settlement happens instantly? So this question will go to Rajiv. Can technology help in mitigating this? Like real time I can scan and send the documents to the TPA, they can keep going as and when the treatment happens. Is it possible? Sir, most, uh, can I take a mic from you? See, most APIs today with insurance companies and large intermediaries are already integrated. So whether it is applying for a policy, whether it is you know submitting a claim, everything happens through technology online, you know, including your paper submission. Now, if your question is directly related to the question which you asked previously to him, that when you go to a hospital, why is that there is a rejection that this is not included you know, uh, as a part of a claim? It's a million dollar question which all of us have faced, I mean including uh, professionals from the insurance companies, including from people who are aware of, of, of this business. So this is something which is a top kept secret as to why accessories of, uh, you know, used in the hospital will not get reimbursed. Why should it not get reimbursed when you are completely, you know, uh, covered by health? So it is not about paperwork. All paperwork is complete, right? But this rejection happens in the last minute because you are in a rush to, you know, uh, settle your bill and take your patient out, they say the TPA is approved, but this amount uh, is not allowed. It's not there as per allowable. And that is something which I think collectively, along with the healthcare industry, the TPAs, the insurers, and the intermediaries will have to find a solution together because this is a problem which is creating the trust issue for customers. Be it a corporate insurance, be it individual insurance, and that time even paying 10,000 from your pocket hurts you. See that why did I pay that premium then if I have to, you know, pay this money from my pocket? I think that is some that is a trust issue. But today, biggest issue 
which probably the health insurance industry is facing is the trust issue. You know, more than the amount of premium you pay, it is a trust issue that when I need the money, will I get the money back? Just to add on the same point, what is said, most of the deductions at the time of discharge are for the non-payable items and consumables, and which is typically a policy condition. And as you know pretty well, people start negotiating at the time of taking the policy. If blanket every policy covers these consumable items, absolutely no problem, all of us fight with the insurers and get it. But when there is a policy condition, these are given typically as add-on covers by most of the policies. While buying the policy, we all try to save that 100 rupees, 200 rupees, 500 rupees and this I want the basic cover that is enough. I don't want this consumables cover. But when a claim comes, I want everything under the sun. Sir, this is not a blame game. Sir, it's not a blame game. The whole idea is, the whole idea is, see, all of us sitting here are professionals. You know, some of them are representing the company, some of them representing industries. But this is seriously an issue. Like in vehicle insurance, you have zero debt, right? You say that everything is payable. Something in the health insurance has to come out soon there, you know. Because people don't explain at the time of selling a policy that this will not be payable to you. Particularly when you buy GMCs, you know, I mean, most of us are covered through GMCs to a certain extent. GMC doesn't cover, you know, the entire. somebody covers you 2 lakhs, somebody says 5 lakhs. But there again, a lot of conditions are probably not even explained by the company, nor does the company know at the time of signing the policy. They may be aware, but it is not explained to the employees that these conditions are, you know, uh, not covered in your policy. So transparency around why this is not getting covered, is there an option to cover? For example, when I took my mother for a treatment for a hip replacement surgery, a number of consumables were not covered. To my simple question, whether the option was given to you at the time of buying a policy to cover that, the option was not given. It is not that the add-on was somebody is not willing to pay 100 rupees, knowing very well that the 100 rupees could cover them the 20,000 rupees of consumables. So is the option available, number one? Are we offering those options? That's the question. No, that, that is what exactly is the point, that the sales have to be transparent first, and the person should know what is covered, what is not covered. That is what we talked about, the suitable cover. Okay. Having policy issued, the TPA cannot do anything. Fair point. No, so this is not an intermediary no. inter inter no, blame game. game. No, 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 no. no. So, you are also inter <laughs> So, okay. Now, in the award objective of the IRDAI, we are talking only about insurance here, health insurance. They say anything should be what? Affordable, accessible, and that should be awareness. So now we all agree in this panel that awareness can be and should be created by the intermediary. There is no two opinions of this. There should be transparency in sale or in fact greater detailing I would say it is necessary. Awareness is one thing. Accessibility. Do people not buy insurance merely because they do not have access to insurance? What do you say? Personally, if you ask me, I would say no. It is the trust deficit factor which comes to the fore. Tell me kuch claim hoga to milega ki I have seen even in corporate insurances, CFOs tell me, boss, if I get 70% of my loss, I am happy. I don't want to get into a prolonged legal battle or anything to try and get my dues. I think as an insurance industry, all of us sitting here on the panel, I think we have not done enough on this factor. So the trust deficit, how do we bridge the trust deficit? So the question is not about a trust deficit. The Indian mindset what we have got. If you are paying something, you should get back. That is the mindset we have got. If you have paid for health insurance for four years, five years, if there is no claim. If you have not taken any money from the insurance company, then he thinks, why I should renew the insurance? So this is most of the cases we face this. And coming to the question, trust deficit, sir, I, I don't think now that kind of trust deficit we have in the current regulations, uh, with so much money in place, with so much social media in place, and TPS, TPS are doing wonderful job. Even last 15 days back, there was a, uh, what we can say, multi-organ failure patient was there. She was shifted from one hospital to another hospital 
I got a call around 10:30 in the night. It was a Sunday. I spoke to the south head, and immediately it was escalated. Within 15 minutes, uh, final approval was given. The, the patient was shifted to another hospital. I don't think I don't agree with that. There is no such trust deficit, but the awareness we need to create, and not only that, we need to put it to the minds of the people that health insurance is not a expense; it's an investment. What you are making for your well-being. Do you believe there is a trust, de trust deficit between insurer and intermediary, intermediary and client, client and insurer? Like in the morning session, one of the panelists made a mention, and I concur with him. So, what do you say? Is there a trust deficit in the industry? Now, I think Rajiv also made that point. I, I, I don't think I fully agree with Lokesh. Absolutely, I don't think trust. There is any trust deficit. Major part, I'm talking. Okay. Here and there, future cases. Okay. Typically, I just tell you one thing, the trust deficit comes in where something the person should get, he is not getting it. Yeah, something, there are two things, what I should get, I am not getting, what I am expecting to get, I am not getting. There is a gap between these two. And having worked with the both public sector, private sector, now with the TPA, with working almost with the entire industry players, let me tell you on behalf of the entire industry, because I am referring to a few comments made in the morning session, hmm. not even a single insurance company, let me underline, not even a single, underline bold, not even a single insurance company ever thinks of not paying an I, an, any amount which is genuinely payable. I have not seen in 30 years any instruction from any insurance company, now working with more than 20 companies, either official or unofficial. No insurance company tells you, boss, my bottom line is cut a little bit. Sorry, I have never listened. This is a very honest statement I am making. And in health insurance, if you see, 95% of the claims get settled. We talk about 5, 6, 7 percent, whatever. I don't remember exactly the industry number. Claims get denied. The reasons are very obvious. Again, 1%, 2%, there could be... Um, some errors by, from, from some people like me, I may commit a mistake, but most of the claims are where the policy conditions are not adhered to, like the pre-existing diseases, non-disclosure of material facts and so on, which are absolutely as per the policy terms and conditions. But the gap is between the expectation and what is actually available under the policy. Sorry, we will take okay, questions. Okay, we'll take questions at a later point. Okay. I, I, I just had a question. Yes, I think uh, probably we are getting, we are mixing two things. The issue is not about the trust deficit for a customer who's bought a policy. So claims are getting settled. I think I fully agree and concur with all of you that when we sell policies today, the worry is not whether the insurance company will settle the claim or not. I think we are addressing a larger issue of penetration in this country, right? The health insurance penetration, why is it missing? What, what is the missing middle? Why are people not buying health insurance? This is not the question about people who bought and facing rejections. Facing deduction and rejection is two different things. I mean, whether, whether I get a full claim, whether I have got a 20,000 rupees lesser than what I should get, that is a separate discussion altogether. The discussion here is, the trust deficit is among common people in terms of, should I buy a health insurance policy or not? That is the trust deficit I am talking about, not the trust deficit about people who have bought a policy, will I get my claim or not. I think that claim settlement ratio is very well aware that the entire industry, every company doesn't want to bring a bad name of not settling the claim, right? But how do we take this trust back? How do we go back to the customers and say, this health insurance is important for you. If you buy, it will help you in the future. And Experiences in the past indicate that 98, 100% of the claims have always been settled. So that you don't go out of pocket when you really want to settle a high, you know, health bill in future. I think that is the trust deficit we are talking about. Put, put it positively, what I call complete trust or blind trust is when we approach certain customers and ask them, after policy hai kidder? They don't even know the name of the company. Yes, they will say Sharma ji place karte hai na. They depend on the agent. Yes, that is yes, the trust yes, they have. Yes, yes, yes. So insurers actually not only use the selling and marketing skills of the intermediaries, Correct. but also the trust which the intermediary Correct. Correct. So that is very very valid point. So, because as of when I moved from the government sector to the private sector and went marketing, 
we found it very difficult to break through. There was a Sharma ji, there was a Khanna sahab, there was a Gupta ji who was doing the insurance. Client did not name, know the name of the insurer. That was the trust. And now the trust is waning. That was a simple point. Okay. Now having said this, so we said that yes, uh, the awareness, intermediaries, it is their responsibility. We will create it. We do create it. Affordability, not totally in our hands. It depends on the manufacturer. And manufacturer also depends on his loss ratios. So he goes around. So it's a different circle or a different ball game altogether. The third point is accessibility. Well, an intermediary, we reach out to the customer. Like I said, we bring in the trust, we bring in the uh, negotiation, we bring in the marketing abilities, everything. But we cannot reach everywhere because there is a cost involved in it and there has to be a return for that to me because that's my livelihood. So will technology provide the solution, Rajiv, of penetrating into far-flung areas? Sir, sir, I think certainly technology has made a big difference both in terms of cost rationalization. I wouldn't say distribution through technology is the only solution. I think all kinds of distributors are very crucial and very important for the ecosystem. Uh, uh, companies like Policy Bazaar sell policies through digital, uh, you know, uh, mode, and I think that's a different market altogether. People who understand, you know, digital, people who are comfortable getting their product, understanding from, you know, uh, digital, uh, will certainly buy through digital, you know, and with minimum human intervention. But India is a large country. India, Indian ecosystem still requires large number of people to go and explain to the consumer why this is important, what are these features, because he is not comfortable reading the features on the screen and then deciding to buy a policy. I think that will always you know, uh, uh, remain in this country for many, many years to come. The, your question about has technology helped? Technology has certainly helped. Technology has certainly helped to cut down paperwork, to bring down your you know, expenses. So your product cost has also come down. But the major issue today is, you pointed out somewhere here while, while you were explaining this, are we classifying this country into different categories? You know, today the top is getting taken care, the bottom is getting taken care by the government to a large extent, but I think the middlemen, the middle class, which is the missing middle, we call it, you know, in a favorite way, which is, which is not probably getting taken care. Today, tier one, tier two cities, there are distributors, be it online, be it agents, uh, you know, be it a lot of other people. Tier 1, Tier 2, there's a lot of focus. But when it goes to Tier 3 and Tier 4, how many people are into this profession of selling you know, insurance to those consumers? So those consumers don't even know, where do I go and buy an insurance? Should I go and buy an insurance? So creating you know, that kind of model through technology of reaching out to Tier 3, Tier 4 cities will certainly help. But gentlemen, we have no choice. We have to align with the government vision, health for all. And as I said, Insurance is a subset of healthcare and we have to spread insurance. Technology helps, as you said, to a limited extent, yes. So what could be the way forward for healthcare? Is it a government insurance company's partnership with an excess layer of cover coming in from the insurance, whereas the primary covers all the, well, the entire population? Like for example, I would like the panelists' view on this very quickly because time is running out. Sure. Uh, whether the Ayushman experiment can be enhanced, let's say, to all Aadhaar card holders or compulsorily members in this program, up to a prescribed limit where they pay a limited thing. And it is not insurance, it is health care. So there is no question of a policy condition, pre-existing illnesses, etc., etc. And on top of it, if you want to go, you can buy a policy insurance policy from any insurance company. But the underlying principle will be that whatever the limit under the healthcare scheme would be the deductible under the insurance policy. So that will enable the insurer to price it lower. Is it? Does it sound a viable model? Sir, exactly, Mr. Pravid, what he is saying. Obama kept failed again. State health is a state subject. So, center can't intervene. I, I would like to share a few things here. One, as, as far as the intermediaries are concerned. So your study is still yet not uh, revealing what he has said. Yes, sir. I, I requested that. Yeah, you can, can run through the show. 
Yeah, now just, just, so it doesn't work, you say, right? I just go to the last Yes, slide. it doesn't work. Okay, what about you? I've got few suggestions there. Yeah. Even for the senior citizens, if government comes up with a scheme, just like Aishman Bharat, for above 60 or 65, now these uh, two schemes are there. One is personal accident and another life insurance. There's term insurance uh, marketed by banks. Such type of scheme should be there for senior citizens because the rate of premium every day is going up like anything. That's the one way. And already you might have read, most of the people have read in the newspapers that open architecture, this opening up of the insurance industry for the insurance agents. They wear, now the agents are confined to working work with only one company. That also should be opened up. I think that's a workable model. Uh, typically up to a small sum of 50,000 or 1 lakh giving a basic cover. Why I feel it works is typically it removes the factor of adverse selection. Why the group policies sell cheaper? I am talking technically whether undercutting or not is a different thing. Group policies che work cheaper because of two things. One, the lesser cost of acquisition and re reduced adverse selection. So if across the country 140 crore Indians are covered for a lakh of rupees, Let's say I talk about in an insurance model, what is the coverage is a different thing. Today, Aishman Bharat policies typically work out for 5 lakh rupees, 5 lakh sum insured at 2000 rupees. Okay, the packages are quite low and all is fine. We can rework, but for the BPL, I think we can continue to do. For the APL BPM, we can give a base cover at a nominal premium and the insurance companies can offer a top of cover on that. In my opinion, it may not workable because in one country, we have 29 countries and every state government, I have seen in a, with my own eyes that the one political party captured the power again because of the group medical policies. Now this is a, either one state is a propagating and they want credit, one state wants credit and uh, it, even some of the other, uh, Aishwan Bhavan, some of the state have not been implementing that. Because credit should not go X, Y to Y, Z. And uh, today the first time I am on the platform I am telling that before this Aishman Bharat, I am the person who took appointment from Mr. N.D. Nadda. He was the health minister. From Hyderabad all the way I went and told this policy you implement, it will be yield very good result. I don't take credit that it has been implemented because of me. But like you friends also can. But this policy, this is not practical. Yes, uh, I can add uh, that a uh, marketing arm should be strong. There should be now 33, 34 lakh agents we have in the country. Some 600 brokers we have. So, so it, we have to work, we have to reach and this country does, doesn't depend only on system. One, one bar samne bed ka usko batai ye nahi. Isme ye cover hai, isme ye cover hai, isme ye nahi hai. Ab ye sign karna. Till then our client won't be satisfied and we are the sandwich between a TPA, between the insurance company, between the client. If any claim comes midnight, we have to leave our family and stand in the hospital and we have to work like a doctor. Doctor sitting out inside, we are sitting outside. We both we are working like that. So it is a very difficult job for uh, intermediaries. But okay, we have survive and our client also should get. But so many things are there. Mr. Vajanji is sitting. I can hear. He should use his uh, good office, not like this conference. Some 10 people in one room closed for three days and discuss with the IRD because, because there are 33 companies having 33 policies every day. How, how we don't understand what type of policy, what covers. So how a particular unknown person can know about the coverage. So there is a simplification has to be there, otherwise it will be difficult to sell the policy. So that concludes the discussion, gentlemen. I think there was a. I had a very important question, but then I don't think there is time for that. None of this time. Can I go ahead? Go ahead. No, they have, told, they have given me an ultimatum. Okay. Now, this question uh, could raise a few eyebrows. There was an ad sometime in February, I think, a full page ad in Hyderabad, which proclaimed that we are neither an insurer nor an intermediary and we are providing you healthcare services. And now there are many, dime a dozen everywhere, different types of operations, 
health card membership that she gives you so many benefits gym along with that there is a tagged along health insurance also what do you make of these entities should we not add the word apart from affordable and quality sustainable health care because these entities are never regulated by anybody and they they just operate they proudly proclaim they are neither insurers nor intermediary so what are they so lokesh first quick yes sir sir uh, now one more thing which is no way it's regulated now uh, client processing agencies no no first of all yes. let's answer this question let's not jump the gun Yes, but what do you think of these agencies? Like, I don't want to name them here in public, but there are plenty of them. We all know. It should be. It should be uh, stopped. Stopped. It should be stopped. They are they are misleading the citizens. Sir, don't you give opportunity to ask? It is one question. Yeah, you can ask. Sir. Of course, sir. Waiting for moderator to ask us. Just these are not sustainable models. I think regulators should look into these things immediately and take all these reactions. Uh, I, I think, sir, the, there is no debate on this, right? At the end of the day, such fly-by-night operators across industries exist. Not only insurance industry, you find them everywhere. You know, they are there to fleece, uh, you know, uh, people. They are there to cheat people. I think uh, such people don't have a future. The only problem is whenever somebody gets to know about them, please report immediately, so that people take action against these companies. Because by the time we take action, it takes few months, and by then they would have fleeced some crores and gone out of the system. I think that is the biggest problem in this country. Report when we get to know, we report. I am sure each of us are responsible people. When you get to know, please report. That is the only solution. So I think. Now we can take a few questions. Good evening, panel. <clears throat> My name is Prashant. Prashant Matre. I represent GRP as their president. Yes, this mushrooming of so-called health providers, claims counselors is there. I also understand that some of them. are promoted by back end ops of some tps and ex tps persons no let's not get into no, who promotes no, as a concept as a concept this has to be stopped in the world and i would have it would have been very apt if a representative was ird was present actually for this session not required not required it's all getting recorded they get it Second, second, question, please. second. Uh, whatever, whatever Shri Kant sir said. Uh, I have my practical experience used to counter it because, unfortunately, trust issues crop up because the TPS don't deliver in time because they do not have adequately qualified medical staff. Unfortunate fact. If I ask any TPA, 95 to 98 percent of claims come from the allopathic range of services. And how many allopathy doctors are there on board of these TPAs for the day to day? You have dentists, you have physiotherapists, you have UMS, you have BAMS, you have BHMS. All of them are qualified in their pathi. may be very knowledgeable they have excellent clinical skills i am not denigrating them i am just saying that they are not qualified to handle allopathy because my policy says my policy says that crosspathy is not allowed so if crosspathy is not if a doctor is not allowed crosspathy to treat how can he settle a claim because he is why is he not allowed because he is not qualified to do that no no you are making a statement or asking a question and therefore my question to the tpa is yeah. <laughs> when are you going to come with adequate allopathy doctors on your panel to ensure proper processing of claims okay, okay so you can call yours uh my answer can to use very clearly never <laughs> because Because <laughs> yeah, just let me add. I think we are running out of time. It's not the cost. I am not talking about the cost. Cost is one factor. 
cost if my cost is not working either i shut my shop or ask more from the insurer so cost is not the factor let me tell you there are two factors i give you one a tpa factor one is a national factor when we talk about a tpa factor a tpa is not allowed to deliver or render any clinical advice the board line of treatment clinical protocols are 100% prerogative of the treating doctor tpa cannot interfere now what the tpa is saying here is whether the particular whatever is given is as per the policy terms and conditions or not and whatever claims deducted and let me confirm i can i don't unfortunately don't carry it in my laptop but there is shown 99% of the claims rejected are deducted are due to non medical reasons 1% could be due to medical reasons for which every tpa like today good health has got about close to 100 mbbs doctors we have about 400 aish doctors so they, they, we have 100 doctors to support and guide in time case of critical things and we have close to 50 specialist doctors are on panel so one i don't see any necessity of an mbbs doctor doing these all these doctors all have studied the same anatomy etc 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 in for first year and they are well equipped to understand the medical terminology they don't have to give the treatment just to add one more point recently mumbai mumbai government has conducted a bridge course for the aish doctors to allow them to conduct a, i don't remember exactly what treatments and surgeries because they believe 50 to 60% of the claims are medical management claims medical certain or treatments so they have allowed them that is part one so tps will never come up with and i personally feel we can debate it later okay. but i don't think doctor require one last question second, sir just one yeah. one last addition the second part is as it is we have discussed it's a 135 crore country many towns villages do not have enough doctors why an mbbs on whom the nation has spent so much of money should leave a clinical practice and work with a tpa to do a paperwork this is a question i leave it yeah good thought Uh, yes, sir. Last I, question, sir. I have, I have one question to ask. Yes, See, so many insurance companies are mushrooming now. The marketing department is totally different from claims department. Marketing people give such a rosy picture, and make you also sometimes tell. You say like this, then you will get a phone call from the company. You say like this. This is this is a very unhealthy, unethical practice that is going on. from the marketing department because they are giving targets and they get their commission how can you cut that that's most essential it is killing the industry this is number one the second question is why only allopathic medicine is allowed by the insurance companies why not ayurvedic and holistic treatment so that is a question which we need to address to the insurers i would have been happy had an insurer been on the panel also I am going to ask the visual side about it. Yeah, so I think just, just to answer, all almost all policies cover all Aish up to certain cover, limit. Yeah, yeah. Now we do. 80% of the submit should, if I remember correctly, maybe other friends can. 25% Aish is covered. All policies there are different. The only problem is it requires hospitalization, which Aish mostly does not do. Thank you, gentlemen. I think we should call it a day. I am very tired now. It was a very engaging discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that was a wonderful session. May I please invite on stage uh, Dr. V. Chaturvedi, General Secretary, Swasthya Cancer Care, to hand over the plants and the mementos, please.
Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. We would now break for tea. So there's one more session which we have after a short tea break. We will break for tea for around 10 minutes. We will be back right here in the hall exactly after 10 minutes at 4.45. Thank you. Acharya sir was the special chief secretary to the government of Telangana and director general Dr. Marichana Reddy Human Resource Development Institute of Telangana. The speakers we have for this session are Mr. Bijan K. Mishra, IRDI nominee, executive committee of the GI Council. Professor Bijan Mishra, international consumer policy expert, is an honorary professor at the National Law University of Orissa and professor R&D Northeast Christian University in Nagaland. Mr. Shekhar Agarwal, Chair, Health Committee, FTCCI. Shri Shekhar Agarwal, Sir, Past President, Convener of Health Committee, FTCCI, Managing Director, Bhagyanagar Polymers Private Limited. Dr. V. Chaturvedi, General Secretary, Swastava Cancer Care, Member of FTCCI since 2001 and Member Health Care Committee 2023 and 24. Srimati S. Nirmala Devi Ji, Secretary, Office of Insurance Ombudsman, we also have with us Mr. Rajiv Nath, Forum Coordinator, Association of Indian Medical Devices. Mr. Rajiv Nath is the Managing Director of Hindustan Syringes and Medical Devices Limited and has held many eminent positions across various organizations. Dr. P. Vyasamurthy, EC Member Telangana, All Senior Citizens Association. Sir, uh, we would like to uh, request uh, Shekhar Agarwal, sir, to just hand over the plants to all the members. Good evening and uh, welcome back to the uh, session. Uh, 
uh, it's a big challenge to have a session immediately after the tea break and at the back end of the day. You've had a long day uh, since morning. So we have, as read out by the introducer, we have a very distinguished panel here. Uh, so I would, uh, because of the time constraints and the number of speakers on the panel, I would request Professor Mishra to start with a video clip uh, which he has got on the patient uh, forum, patient organization. I'm forgetting the name of the organization. Patient Safety and Access. Patient, uh, patient uh, Safety and Access Organization, the Baroda based organization, where the Vice President has himself made a clip on the issue. I think he's online. Yes. Okay, thanks. Well, thank you so much for supporting this event, Mr. Seth. Chairman Shri Anil Agarwal, Professor Bijan Kumar Misra, Shri Shekhar Agarwal, ladies and gentlemen, I bring greetings to you from Patient Safety and Access Initiative of India Foundation. Thank you for inviting me to this very prestigious Health Insurance Summit, Vision 2030, Quality and Affordable Health. I am delighted to speak on modernizing customer grievance redressal mechanisms to assure customer delight. In as much as I wanted to be here in Hyderabad to participate in your deliberations, I am unable to join due to personal reasons and therefore sending a short video presentation. I have shared the full text of my presentation with Professor Bijan Kumar Misra. Let me begin by focusing on two important aspects, affordable health care and more specifically on quality. India was one of the early signatories for universal health coverage. It simply means we want to provide accessible and affordable health care to every citizen of our country. The second important aspect is quality. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 3 and 18 deal with quality assurance and access to medicines, devices and services respectively. If we want to delight customers through quality of our products or services, we should first do standard setting of quality we desire. Fortunately, we have a system readily available under ISO 9001-2015. It's easily doable. In 2021, Consumer Online, uh, Online Foundation did it using this tool for complete redressal mechanisms. Under ISO 9001-2015, service providers can plan, develop processes, create systems, create documentation, face audit, get assessed, and avail certification. For IRDAI, this is an opportunity in waiting to implement ISO 9001-2015 and delight customers. Consumer Online Foundation did it under the leadership of Professor Bijan Kumar Misra. Finally, let me share a small case study. This study is about over-enthusiastic insurance agents and how they lure senior citizens for expensive health policies and dragging them for medicals when company has already rejected the applications resulting in waste of time and energy. Such practices are unethical perhaps for the selfish purpose of earning commission and should be discouraged. Based on my experience, I strongly feel a certified consumer complaint grievance redressal <coughs> mechanism can avoid such issues and improve communication between company agents and consumers. Thank you once again for invitation and allowing me to share my thoughts. Thank you, Mr. Seth. Uh, and thank you for supporting this event. You are one of the initial supporters sponsors for this program. We thank you on behalf of the Federation for your support. Mr. Seth mentioned about the role of medical devices. Who we have with us Mr. Rajiv Nath, who represents the Association of Indian Medical Device Industry. 
it, as you would have realized, uh, the Grivan Sinter cell and the medical devices are interlinked. In a way, medical devices, use of medical <coughs> devices are th there, as he says, to prevent uh, grievances from coming up in case of medical uh, insurance. So he would like to highlight on that aspect. Mr. Nath, <coughs> about four minutes on this topic, please. You could speak from here or there. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. I thought there was going to be a video. Uh, maybe I have taken that position over there. Hello, everyone. We are talking about quality healthcare, affordable healthcare. Now, that cannot be reaching anybody <coughs> unless you have got quality medical devices to deliver that. And devices can be anything from a simple syringe, whether for giving a vaccine or for a therapeutic shot to an MRI machine, to an X-ray machine, to a wheelchair, to a thermometer, to an oximeter, or even a simple mask. And more and more of you have got familiar with your medical device post-COVID now. The main issue that I wanted to bring and highlight over here is, we're talking about addressing customer grievances. That is the curative part. From manufacturing, I would like to focus upon the preventing part. If you don't have need for grievances, there is no need to redress them. So we have to bring in an ecosystem where we are trying to minimize the creation of grievances, where patients don't feel upset. You don't have cases like Johnson Johnson where you've got implants coming in, they're corroding and the regulator is not supporting you and the patients have to create a union and go to the media and fight for their rights. That's not a fair position when the product already is under regulations. That could have been understood for the 6,000 odd medical devices that were not being regulated. Now, how many of you are aware that effective from this year, all medical devices are regulated? You cannot sell any medical device, you cannot manufacture any medical device unless you got at least a registration or a manufacturing license. You cannot import anything. Are you aware that you cannot even resell a medical device from now on without a proper registration? Are you aware that even a hospital is a reseller of a medical device needs to get himself registered for selling that medical device? And if he is not, he is doing that activity on today's date illegally. Are you also aware that a hospital is many times reusing, re-sterilizing medical devices, repackaging them, relabeling them? In terms of making it affordable and cheaper for patients. And that activity also is treated as manufacturing and for that he needs a manufacturing license. And if he is continuing to do that from 1st of April this year, he is doing it as an illegal activity. So the reason I am pointing this out is that because when such activities do happen under an unregulated area, you will naturally have more infections taking place. If single-use medical devices or meant for single-use are going to be used multiple periods of times where manufacturers have not advised their reuse and they're not designed for reuse, in terms of making it just affordable, if a doctor is reusing a syringe or is using an expensive catheter, whether it is a cheap syringe or an expensive catheter, it can lead to a cross-infection. It can lead to issues. So you have patients who come into a hospital for three days of treatment for a hernia, they get a hospital acquired infection and they have to stay one week or two weeks or three months over there and they're being pumped with antibiotics. So that is the hidden cost of staying in that hospital bed over there. Whereas you also know that now medical technologies have become so advanced and even medical interventions have now become so advanced that doctors claim that you can come to a hospital, go in the, come in the morning, go in the evening, or come today and go back tomorrow because they got the confidence that doing minimum invasive surgeries. And technologies and devices are available to help doctors and surgeons do those kind of operations and those technologies are helping over there. So the question is, are the hospitals and the insurance providers seeking that the hospitals and the products that they are using are quality products? They are coming from certified manufacturers. That certification is coming from 
QCI, NABCB accredited certification bodies? Are they having the Indian certification for medical devices, ICMED certification? And are insurance companies giving an extra point to the hospital when they are certifying them to a NAPH accreditation or whatever? Are they also doing that on the basis of the procurement practices and the medical devices that they are buying based on quality, not only on price? Because if not, then you have a sieve and there will be leakages. And those leakages means poor quality products come through, it means corrupt practices come through. And that's where we need to have either voluntary certification systems, uh, robust procurement practices, or you need to have a regulatory oversight. So, this is important that insurers in behalf of the patients are able to insure through hospitals and ensure that whatever is coming in, the quality is being checked and the whole supply chain is being built for that. Are they also checking that the technologies that are being used, they have undergone a health technology assessment and the health technology assessment has proven that this is a safer and a more cost effective way of giving therapy. So these are all benefits which are available to patients in terms of public health care. And public health care does not only mean public health care in a government hospital. Public health care also means public health care in a private hospital. Public is public. We also have to question that the hospital impaneled underwriters teams, third party assessment people, the claim settlement teams, how much are they well versed with quality, medical device certification and regulations? If they are not, then they will not be able to take care of patient safety concerns and protect patients over there. And once again, like I mentioned to you, if you, the quality is not good, it means other procedures, other issues, and then you are spending extra time on the hospital bed over there. Are they also aware that the whole market is flooded with products having false certifications and false logos. So you must have seen when you are buying masks, there is a USFDA logo on the box. There is a C marking prominent logo on the box. Now in most cases that is completely unauthorized. USFDA does not permit anybody in the world to put the USFDA logo on their packaging. If anybody has it, that, that manufacturer is misleading, he is not having that certification. He will not be permitted to do that. And if he's putting a CE mark, he also has to put the CE mark number. So that by that number, he is traceable to the website of the C certification body and you can have a linkage over there. If that number is missing, that means he is again misleading the consumers over there. And it's this kind of misleading packaging and certification which is happening unregulated in the country. All this fake certification uh, pro proliferation which becomes a demotivating factor for the actual manufacturers who actually have earned the certification. So they are sincere manufacturers who have actually earned the certification and then people in the market will say, yes, certificate, you can just buy them anywhere. So this becomes a slap on the people who actually have worked hard and the teams and engineers who have worked hard to earn that certification. Same thing like hospitals, who are the sincere hospitals who got accreditation from NABH, for example, or JCI. Are you also aware that on today's date, I'm just finishing, yeah, I'm just finishing. Are you also aware that hospitals and insurers in the area of digital health, that even software is a medical device and that needs to be regulated and currently being regulated? And if hospitals are using software for clinical evaluation, they also are covered under that. So if anybody is operating a hospital without doing that, is doing that illegally. So as insurers, be aware about that. The government has a policy for localization and degeneration of medical devices. So we hope that insurers and the hospital systems are taking cognizance of that and giving advantages to that. So Niti Yog and the Parliamentary Healthcare Committee and our association has been recommending for quite some time that for patient safety, you cannot have medical devices regulated as drugs. We are not medicines. There is a need for a separate medical device act. That act can have many facets for protecting patients. 
giving quick access to innovative products because you cannot have clogging of access to medical devices under the new system now because while we have a rule book for the manufacturers it is parked under a cosmetic and drugs act and that is going to be limiting access of innovative medical devices to patients also the problem still remains like johnson johnson if something goes wrong how do you get compensated ethical manufacturers don't mind compensating they don't mind being wrapped on the knuckles is better than bribing somebody is better than looking the other way and trying to fool the system so let's have a system or a law that can be implemented which is implementable like the fsci act where you have an act which is mostly decriminalized and you don't have fear of complying with the act if for every act most people are going to be non compliant it becomes a bigger issue so patients and manufacturers and insurers and hospital providers need to work as a team like was being discussed earlier today and we are along with that to work along with you and to listen to you thank you thank you mr nath uh, for giving us an overview of what is the latest regulation on the medical devices in fact during covid we did face such problems very frequently where the complaints about masks being reused the pp kits being reused doctors were at the wrong end of the uh, the products there was a shortage in the first phase particularly uh, so thank you for uh, apprising us about that next i would like to invite uh, uh, dr p vyasamurthy he, he represents an interesting group of people group of uh, association of uh, uh, people called telangana senior citizens association which uh, uh, the grievances mainly come from this kind of group uh, i would like him to highlight what are the from the senior citizens point of view what are the possible grievances and how we could serve them better thank you <laughs> Four minutes, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I won't take much time because I haven't come totally prepared. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll give a couple of points which I've noted. Some of them may or may not uh, uh, be correct because I have not been keeping up to date uh, myself on this topic. Um, I don't know whether mental health is covered under health insurance or not. You can, no. It is not now covered. No. Oh yeah. It has just got covered. Yeah. Twenty. My information is twenty twenty. I am very happy to know that. Yes. The waiting period for pre-existing disease varies from one to four years. Has it been reduced? <coughs> I do not know. <coughs> Some companies. Some companies. Yes. Uh, I learned that there are about five or six companies uh, giving special. Uh, offers for senior citizens. Whether they all of them follow some st standard rule, I do not know. Then, <coughs> most central government health insurance schemes like PMGAY or other things are for BPL category, and now something has come for APL also. How effectively it is going to be implemented, and how people would benefit by that? There is a lot of awareness creation to be done, even among the. senior citizens and communities who will do that uh, there are questions to be answered then uh, there cap on entry of age at 80 years is most favorable schemes this must be uniformly made to i request to 85 is there any company which is entry age of senior citizens for that if you if you got can insurance right for a long time continuation is easy but fresh is very very difficult they would, at one point at time i remember it was 72 years after that you can't uh, entry enter into the total okay then now i believe that ayush and siddha and homeopathy systems are also included in uh, uh, health care uh, health insurance i do not know whether it's how effective it is and we had our speakers talk about it also renewability of life must should be offered in all cases for senior citizens crossing a certain age i don't know whether it is feasible or possible that that is my wild suggestion then insistence on medical examination uh, must be done away with uh, or included as a part of the premium itself the first premium can be high subsequent renewal pre premiums can be affordable so you can include that in that but these are wild uh, requests 
how far it would uh, get into the minds of the people, I do not know. Practical issues of portability, transfer from one insurer to another must be addressed. Then daycare procedures, are a cataract and all that, and not requiring hospitalization, we just walk in and come out, should also be covered. Okay. So, as I confessed in the beginning itself, I am not uh, uh, quite up to date on this topic. Whatever your few thoughts which I came to mind, I would have written and asked for. Very good. <coughs> yes. Then, uh, I, uh, Mr. Chalikani Rao was talking to me yesterday. He had a thought that senior citizen associations and federations of senior citizens associations must take up the responsibility to either collaborate with the, the insurance industry or start some schemes of their own because they can gather a large number of people. For example, if you take about Federation of Andhra Pradesh senior citizens, they represent of quite a few lakhs of uh, seniors. So they have a wide group of people to whom they can offer. Or an insurance company can tie up with federations and through them make all the members uh, insured persons. So that's a good idea. And uh, instead of, st they should start uh, the medical schemes of their own, in which case they will be tailor-made. They know the requirements. It is not that uh, some insurance uh, company thinks that this can be given and they start off. From the uh, con consumer side, if initiatives are taken, it will be much better. So I don't have anything more to say. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you uh, Mr. Vyasamurthy. These are very relevant issues. Uh, in fact, uh, if you list out all other such issues and pass on, please back in. Uh, Mr. Shekharji, uh, I will tell you how we can take it forward. In fact, uh, I represent an advisory committee which is set up by the IRDAI. Uh, to look after the grievance reducal mechanism and to revamp it the, through the, uh, the insurance ombudsman. Professor Mishra is also part of the committee. I am the chairperson. Uh, she, uh, he is the member. Uh, uh, Professor Rawat from Triple IT, he will also be uh, joining tomorrow. And Professor Venkat Chengavali. Four of us are there in the committee. We, uh, from time to time, uh, we uh, recommend to IRDAI what are the ways and means to revamp the system the two reports which you have sent, how IT can be applied, for instance, there is a new portal which is now called Bima Varosa, uh, which where, of course, it has to be popularized, uh, the scheme, uh, on par with what RBI is doing for the ombudsman for the banks. Uh, so that is where offices like insurance ombudsman become important. We have an office of Hyderabad insurance ombudsman. Unfortunately, the insurance ombudsman is away today. She, he has deputed the secretary Mrs. Nirmala Devi, she has got a few case studies where cases where uh, the awards were passed, the grievances were redressed by the ombudsman on the health insurance side. She will briefly tell about that. So, and uh, as and when uh, suggestions come, we would like to take it up with IRDAI uh, to see where rules have to be changed, where the companies have to be sensitized. It is happening in a, for instance, the uh, amount uh, which was uh, the limit was earlier. Uh, 30 lakhs, we have recommended to increase it to 50 lakhs. The amount was one year, the period limitation was one year. No, I'm asking of the senior citizen representative. We are aware of it, but we are not asked. That's what I'm saying. You are aware? Yes, we are aware. You are aware, but you have not asked. The best tool to us today is the right to information. Correct. Nobody can deny you. Learn to write. Questions which will get you answers from the right places at the right time in the right manner. And that is why we are having this deliberation. But they are not giving proper information in that case. No, no, no. Again, that's a very relative term. If you, if you talk to me in Telugu, I will not be able to understand. Please. What is not right for you may not be right for everybody. Not be right for everybody. They are answering you something which is what they can answer you, okay? But if you are not able to understand that, it is you who has to ensure that you understand in the language you understand. You see, I went to UK to study Citizens Charter. I was supported by Government of India to go and study Citizens Charter. In Telugu, they are publishing Citizens Charter in London. Wow. 
Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I asked them, hey, why are you doing it in Guru Mukhi, Bengali, Telugu, Tamil? Well, we have citizens in UK who only know this language. Now, what I am trying to convey to you all is, we print so many literatures, but we never realize for whom we are printing, does he know to read that language? We never realize that. We spend crores of rupees, 20,000 copies printed, distributed. To whom? To people who don't need it also. People who need it, we don't communicate in their language. And then we land up saying, Aapko to 20 saal se bol raha hai, aap suni nahi rahe ho humara baat. Aray, yaar. Hanko, hanko, ab, hanko, oh bhasha mein bolo jo hum samaj sakenge. Aap hanko us bhasha mein bol rahe ho jo hum samaj nahi pa rahe. Aap 20 saal ko, 40 saal tak bolte raho, hum nahi samjhenge. So what my contention is, so my contention is very simple friends. I am not finding faults. I am not criticizing anybody. What I want to tell you all only is, as we are all working towards only one goal, that is no citizen should create a debt or sell their assets to access healthcare. Okay. I want to see in Telangana, that's my desire, my dream, I do not know. 43 years I spent in Jamshedpur. People, when I started moving to Delhi, after 43 years in Jamshedpur, they said, Delhi mein kya karega? Hamala jo Jamshedpur mein kar raha wohi karega Delhi mein. 27 years I spent in Delhi. People asked me, Aray, tum Hyderabad jake kya karega? Hum bolo wohi karega jo hum Jamshedpur mein kiya, jo hum Delhi mein kiya, abhi hum Telangana mein karega. So what I am trying to tell you is, what I want to do is, that let's start from my colony, from my association, from my group of people, from my community, can I give them universal health coverage? Let's start from my home. Like I have covered my children, I have covered my wife, I have covered my person who works for me in my house. I have done that for myself. I am well protected. Now look at your neighborhood. Fortune Towers mein sab kiya hai ki nahi? Universal health coverage nahi kiya. Kon kon nahi kiya? Let's ask those questions. Why haven't you done? The whole objective of this whole exercise which we are trying to do today and tomorrow morning is only to ensure how Telangana can show the world by 2030. Not a single person in Telangana will ever say that I am getting worried how I am going to get treated or who is going to give me the help in terms of my health care. And then we will say with one voice that we will all do it together. Hoga ki nahi hoga. Hoga, hoga, hoga. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Well said by Professor Mishaji. See, you remind me, Churchill was there in the UK. And one convocation, he was invited as the chief guest. And big gathering there, he didn't turn up. Then uh, again, he was invited. That our, he took two months' time. Again, he did, didn't turn up. Then again, postponed. Again, after two, three months, again, he invited. Then this time, he turned up. And then he was seeing, every time he was checking how many people again and again, they come back. You know, he used to have a hat and a cigar and a stick. And uh, they remove the hat, kept the stick, and it, this was his uh, very important speech, what people were expecting. And ever, everyone was listening, keeping their eyes and ears, everything open. And it started, good morning friends, I have got three very important messages for all of you. My first message is, never give up. Second is, never give up. Third is, never give up. So, Vijayan Mishraji has given many important messages. Never give up and never give up, never. Now,
Now, friends, here, uh, Mishraj is coming to the point, and before I come to the uh, something why we are doing this thing, let's have a, uh, from the eminent pa panelist here, and now, uh, uh, Rajuji, medical device, a lot of uh, information you've given, a, a very interesting the time, before I uh, open the floor, uh, we understand that a lot of medical devices are still importing in India, and uh, even the COVID time, the oxygen concentrated, everything. So, it's a major challenge. Government of Telangana is also promoting uh, medical device part. So, how much time will it take India to become self-dependent in the medical de device or not depend on single country import? Anything you would like to share on that? Sure. So, India depends upon 80% of its medical devices from overseas. Even a simple thing like a hot water bottle we are importing. It's very, very important for us to understand, yeah. And why we are doing that? We have misled ourselves in trying to be affordable, we have not become Atma Nirbhar. So we have been importing the products at either 0% duty or 7.5% duty. So even existing manufacturers stopped making or expanding their production because it was cheaper to import under their brand name rather than to put a factory. So manufacturers became traders. 20 years back, 30 years back, the distributors used to become manufacturers. Last India for three months, because we didn't have the resources to give to the doctors and nurses and we had to put up factories over there. More than 600 factories came up in three months time. And for many things, we showed the world that we can become the second factory in the world in six months time. Unfortunately, more than half of those factories have again closed down. Because again, imports are coming in and there's nothing to protect that. So, as consumers, while we want to have access to imports, so that manufacturers don't become complacent and they have competition and they are going to fight the competition, it should be healthy competition for value addition. When imports come in, that is going to undermine Indian manufacturing and close factories. That competition is unhealthy competition and not good for consumers. When custom duties was zero, mobile phones were not being made in the country. Now mobile phones are being made in the country because it's 15% custom duty. And since you have mobile phones being made in the country, you have got a lot of factories coming up and prices coming down. That becomes long-term advantage. So short-term medicine has to be taken for long-term advantage. So this is the main reason. Second is medical devices law. Nobody will put a factory to be treated as a criminal. As a director, I will not like to be called by a judge for anything. So I'm making low-risk medical devices. I don't want to make high-risk devices. My employee makes a mistake and I'll go to jail. Why? I'd rather not make it. So we are discouraging such kind of products, production being done. We have to have laws which are implementable, they are reasonable. You can't build expressways and then put 60 km speed limit sign. If the car can go 120 km. So let's be having something which is realistic and changing times. Thank, you, thank, thank, thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> certainly you must be taking uh, through uh, yourself and your association must be taking it with the uh, government of India and the uh, state. Yes, we are, but there is a huge, very strong imports lobby which does not allow this to change. Forget about medical devices. Do you know the secretary of DPITT, Department of Industrial Trade Promotion and Internal Trade, how many secretaries have changed in the last three years' time? Anybody who comes forward and is a passionate big India person, what the PM wants? The PM wants this, but it's not happening on the ground. There is a very strong imports lobby which will change the person. Not only medical devices, is happening in many fields. So we will talk about making India, but it is mainly being in many product lines being lip service, not actually happening on the ground. So the solution yeah. is FTCCI. You have to come to FTCCI and, and then be able to create a kind of a noise which is from all the stakeholders and not seen that it is being driven by the industry. Uh, you are very genuine, uh, uh, Rajiv ji. And uh, sir, you are wrong. I mean, your uh, political leadership over here is excellent. So they are fighting on behalf of the Telangana government for the success of the medical device park to become a life sciences center, and they realize themselves that there are certain policies from the central government which are not conducive you to. Very big. Uh, you must be doing that. Uh, yes. Medical device park is coming. Yes. So, uh, what Bijanji is telling uh, on behalf of you, we can also represent, and we have got uh, Delhi. Fiki is there, and see, so we have also got the relationship with them. Collaborative uh, efforts are definitely going to help. So, uh, but a good cause, and all of us will do it. Uh, um, uh, thank you. He, he took the time to 
come to thank you very much so nice of you. so it's a great learning uh, for you uh, madam uh, thank you very much for coming here just a small thing now ombudsman certainly we'll also like to promote to our members and others. Uh, normally how much time does it take to, for getting a patient uh, award or the time limit stipulated is 90 days. Sir. Thank you. Sir. 90 okay. days. But mo most of the complaints we have settled within one month. One, that's very good. That, that's that is what we are yes. trying every time. Very good. Time. Very good. But sometimes it and it's certain, it. we, we can't but, understand. But as for rules, it is 90, 90 days. 90 days, but you are doing it 30 days. Yes, right. Congratulations, madam. Good, good job. I thought you should mention is what ombudsman service has been given. You don't need a lawyer. In fact, yeah. you cannot have a lawyer. And you don't have to put free. any money or any fee, it is free. Totally free in the free, sense that government tax is using taxpayers' money to give you this service. So please use it to its full. And also, it is now being heard online. You can sit at your house and lodge a complaint and do it without any paper. Am I right or wrong? Yes, sir. Actually, uh, what I thought was it is an initial round and I thought of. Um, talking about those things in the second no, no, round. Please stop. Uh, okay. Actually, uh, I would please like to, you. yeah, yes sir, I would like to tell that um, uh, the rule, as per rules, it is 90 days, uh, which is a time limit for settlement, but um, more than that, it is uh, the most cost effective, fair, impartial mechanism uh, and uh, there are like whichever way the complainant feels comfortable, he can give a complaint, lodge a complaint, he can either walk into the office he can send uh, by post, his complaint by post or by email or online facility is also there www.cioins.co.in is the uh, website of the Council for Insurance Ombudsman and if the complaint is lodged in the uh, portal, it will be t registered in our office and we will be uh, solving it and um, uh, hearings are also conducted online for the convenience of the people. Direct hearings are also conducted wherever uh, the person requires. Uh, uh, some people insist on coming to the office and, uh, so that they want to see the ombudsman and have a direct hearing, then it, that is permitted. Otherwise, <coughs> online hearings are also done. Even from abroad also people can uh, attend the hearing. So, uh, that's... Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. There's a question there. Uh, can we have the... Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Mike, Mike, please give the mic to him. Somebody, please give the uh, mic to him. Sir, uh, one thing. Uh, I'll just come. I come to you. Then once we'll start, we'll come open house. Then we'll have an open house totally. One short question. Okay. Go ahead. We can hear you. Uh, no. Sir, I am Deekshit from CADCO, Confederation of All Telangana Consumer Organization, sir. One short question to madam. Madam, if uh, one in health insurance, one uh, consumer won uh, the case in uh, uh, district forum, that insurance, uh, Aditya Birla Insurance Company filed appeal in uh, state commission. Can, can we approach you or not? No, sir. As per rules, if, if the uh, complaint is pending before another forum or already dealt with by another forum, we cannot entertain as Because well. the state commission is looking after 2016 cases. Ours is 2018 case. Who told you to go there? <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have not gone there. That insurance company, uh, that uh, Birla insurance company gone there, appeal for appeal. First of all, you should have lodged a complaint to the ombudsman. Why did you go to the district commission? I have not gone there, sir. Yeah, that insurance company gone there. He's saying after the order was passed, the appeal went to this. No, no, but order order got passed by the consumer complaining, na, before the district commission. Yes or no? Yes. First, initially, we won the case. Ah, ah. So you thought you have won the journey and the victory total, na? Oh. So okay, sir, they, whatever is there, madam has told you that uh, now you cannot, okay. this is said you cannot, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you very, very much. Uh, Dr. Vyas Nayanji, now here the th thing is, no, you spoke very well and we like to have more senior uh, citizens representation so that Bijonji can uh, address you, your issues. So whatever senior uh, 
citizens associations are there if you can get connected with the federation uh, that's uh, this coming 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 everywhere so will uh, that will be taken okay. so now uh, don't worry okay uh, just i like to uh, yeah yeah everyone all so he, here uh, we have got mr sukumar sir uh, see uh, there are hyderabad ones uh, you know uh, shroff memorial hospital is there at kachigura and there is a that is a trust hospital and sukumar sir is a chairman for the hospital and not by he is a uh, he but he always like to be very humble and keep a low profile but he certainly got lot of knowledge on the thing sir uh, very briefly what uh, healthcare how we can take it for more affordable and also insurance what we can do from the insurance point of view can you just share ओमट uh, uh ma'am we run a multi speciality not for profit organization basically meant for uh, lower income groups it's a 175 bed hospital in parkarpura uh, uh, one uh, point i have noticed about this insurance companies uh, is that uh, they are very unfair to alcoholics <laughs> <laughs> very unfair because all, see all uh, uh, drinking alcohol is not a crime in india no. and in fact alcoholics are supporting the governments like anything many <laughs> many many governments will simply falter if uh, alcohol is uh, banned so now the problem that our patients are facing is our people have insurance for 2 lakhs 1 lakh 3 lakhs now they come any most of the insurance companies said alcoholic liver disease excluded some there are many liver disease patients that come one attender will come and say the duty doctor he does consume alcohol we do not know what alcohol he consumes how much he consumes nobody knows that is enough for insurance companies to say sorry we will not entertain the claim so one of our patient like uh, bijoy ji rightly said uh, won the case uh, at the consumer forum then uh, those guys are not sympathetic they went on appeal it's a small claim some uh, you know 3 lakhs or uh, something like that they went on appeal and that is pending uh, for 7 uh, years 8 years so this is where i think okay as you rightly said you may not have a role but at least in ombudsman i think you should show lot of sympathy to alcoholics so against the insurance that are come so far apart from alcohol <laughs> apart from alcohol do you got any other challenge which can, which can you think can no, no, we will <laughs> no, any apart from alcohol any other the, the other point on insurance uh, uh, insurance yeah uh, on on uh, where uh, other patients can be served yeah uh, yeah the uh, the point see, the biggest see we we operate on a cross subsidization model which means we charge 1 rupee in the general ward for ward charges hello, hello, please uh, it's very disturbing can you can you please keep quiet is very disturbing yeah we 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 we, we charge 1 rupee per day in a uh, in the general ward okay we charge uh, reasonably uh, in the 2000 rupees in a deluxe air condition deluxe room the when we go to insurance companies they come and tell us uh, you are giving uh, uh, treatment such a, at a low cost why should i give you higher tariff this is being very unfair i am doing out of my charity 1 rupee per day for a general ward so what is the logic behind uh, comparing that and say that you will not get uh, good tariff comparable to other hospitals in a deluxe room This, this is grave injustice being done to trust organization so anything uh, 
बिजोन जी और मैडम और लाइक टू नो नो माय माय सिंपल क्वेश्चन इज आवर कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सेज वेरी क्लियरली दैट देयर कैन नॉट बी एनी डिस्क्रिमिनेशन राइट वेरी क्लियर ओके नाउ इफ यू आर अ विक्टिम यू हैव टू रिप्रेजेंट बिफोर द राइट अथॉरिटी द राइट अथॉरिटी इज आईआरडीएआई यस यू टू राइट टू देम right that i am being discriminated like this by the insurance company right so they will either change the law true or they will tell you sorry i can't do anything for you true, true. now when they tell you sorry i can't do anything from you for you then you have a very good evidence to go and disturb the high court and the supreme court <laughs> and tell them that look i have come under a public interest litigation i have not come on behalf of my hospital i have come on behalf of the public who are being discriminated and not been given reimbursement in the manner it should be given and i am telling you with this my experience of my 40 years i got orders from the supreme court and high court to direct the regulator or the law makers to make laws which are in the interest of what you are saying so vijay ji you are a fighter and uh, i know you have lot of success stories around you but my constraint is the time by no, the time ha no, no 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 today You see, the whole world looks at India as the best outsourcing uh, country in the world. Whatever America can't do, they look at India to make them do. Uh, our Indians stay awake in the night and work for America. You see, what I am wanting to tell you that what you can't do, please give it to the people who can do, and part with some money. For making that person do that, which you don't do, you see the point is you want to keep all the money for yourself no. and you want to do everything no, yourself. No, no. Mishra, you no, Mishra, I will tell you. Hmm. First thing, it is a charity, but it is no money. Number no, one, no, no, no. Again, again, let me tell let, you. Let, let me tell you. No, 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 no. Everybody gets away like that. You see, charity does not mean you don't have money to give sponsorship. And uh, this is also charity. I have not got for sponsorship. So what I am trying to tell you. <laughs> If you are doing charity, you should be the first person to make take money out of your charity to bring a court order which will not discriminate such people who are alcoholics. Yes, that's all I'm trying to tell you. Okay, uh, that's uh, all I'm trying to tell you. I, I think uh, alcohol thing will take uh, offline. <laughs> I, 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 other thing, so Professor Mishra has uh, now we go for the. Permission of the panel, we go to open house. A uh, uh, lot of our friends are waiting, sir. Sir, yeah, we'll start from here. Sir, sir, I'll come to you, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, sir. Just one, give me one, one minute, sir. Very short, point, short, uh, very short, and please. Yeah, yeah, to the point. Uh, your friends uh, can be. Mr. Shiv Kumar was telling. Yeah. See, uh, alcoholic and a social drinker, or they have to measure how to give the claim or read what it is before uh, denying the claim. Even I had one instance now. Somewhere it is written he had uh, one peg, uh, one glass of beer. Claim is still pending. I have to go to the ombudsman right. after I reach Bangalore. So they have to study what it is like. Alcoholic means if it is a insane alcoholic, they have to uh, prefer the claim like that. Or he is a social drinker. What it is, they have to study that. Right. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. So they have to have something, Sir, uh, right. some body to do that. Very good. Uh, right. Sajjan Sirogi. Just short and sweet. Yeah, yeah. I am sorry for coming late because I have misled you about the date. Is the Indian government is really interested in in the lives of old people? I am telling you one thing. See, I have tried my best to make an incidence policy after I crossed seventy. The only one organization is giving incidence. More than 77 is Star Insurance Company. Which one? Star. 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 Okay. We we found him is a military man. That's why he 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 is concerned about that. So what happened? Recently in our place, a group formed, and they have taken our insurance policies. I request you, this forms forum should recommend yeah. other sure. insurance company, other companies. See, they can see they can charge more for premium. They cannot deny uh, the right of living uh, in this country. Yeah, don't tell more. <laughs> will, will this wrong? I'll tell you later on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, sir. Very good. Very good point. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one second. Uh, I have two uh, questions. Uh, 
one uh, directed to Nirmala uh, uh, May is it possible uh, to include the creating awareness about ombudsman in the pro uh, policy itself? When the policy goes to the customer, if you can give a little bit information, how the customer or the consumer yeah. in this case? Yeah. That's the uh, one uh, looking at. And the second thing, if our president, uh, GF, because I represent GF here. Uh, what is that GF? General Insurance Agents Federation Integrated. And uh, I wanted to collaborate, we as GF wanted to collaborate with uh, Mr. Murthy Garu in creating the awareness about a health insurance for the senior citizens. There are so many organizations now available. Uh, one gentleman has just told that it will only the start health. But now there are a couple of companies which have come forward, even at 90 years they are giving the policies. Very good. But there are certain limitations are there. Can we have disclose the name? Because that's useful for us. Because I would like to live up to 95 years. There are, there are, sir. I'll give you, I'll give you the first one. Right? Uh, care is one thing which is giving that. Star is giving that. Neva Bupa is giving that. Okay. 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 Now, that's what I'm saying. I don't want to name the companies here. It's not my intention. Can, can Creating the awareness ah. for the senior citizens okay. about the health insurance products available to them at a minimal cost, at the best possible cost. Sir, if uh, our uh, uh, president permits, I'm ready to take it up. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Madam, we'd like to... Yes. Yeah. yeah, please, please. Mr. Prashant. <laughs> sir, regarding... Sir, why is the president not going to be yeah. Sir, yeah. He's, he's speaking what the forum on the dais wants. And we are there with all our hearts and resources to serve senior citizen community in the best possible way. A lot, sir. A okay. lot. And I'm also a senior citizen, by the way, sir. Very good. Very good. Sir, <laughs> sir, government of India gives me half ticket, sir. No worries. So my, my request, a uh, couple of things I just wanted to add quickly. Please, please. Uh, prevention is better than cure. Yeah. Absolutely. Prevention is better than cure. Why can't why can't the insurance companies be compelled to have an in-house ombudsman, like uh, Bijanji was there for Amway. Even now, you are still there. So the insurance ombuds, an in-house in ombudsman, or an in-house griever, in-house third-party grievance redressal mechanism, if it is compared, it will reduce the load on ombudsman. Madam is right when she says there are 2,000 complaints in Hyderabad, but in cities like Mumbai, Pune, where. Almost 70 per 50 percent of all India health insurance is underwritten in these two in in these zones, Correct. and they attract the maximum complaints. One more thing, like consumer law, the claimant should be allowed to file a claim wherever he wants to file it from, so it is which coming. is not being done. I have seen it in several instances where people. Now it is changed. Now it is changed. This is just 50. Uh, three months back. No, no, they can. Uh, <coughs> Madam, Bombay yes. Ombudsman Office has fly, flatly refused people from Thana saying that they should go to Pune. No, 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 no. They refuse okay. to accept. And therefore, the next uh, suggestion that there should be, I don't know how feasible it is to have a. Because someone says, the, the regulator said there should be an insurance company in each district. So there should be an ombudsman in each district. They, they are planning that. Okay. Uh, sir, first question was uh, no, uh, regarding the... We are running against time. Yes, sir, sir was asking about uh, how policy can be used as a mechanism to spread the message of ombudsman. Actually, every insurance policy has got the address of the insurance ombudsman. And it is very prominently displayed also. And what we feel is even before... Yeah, they are there. Uh, last. Even before approaching the grievance redressal machinery of the insurer, they are approaching the ombudsman. That is true. Uh, that, that is the truth. 
And second thing is, uh, sir was telling about we went to another ombudsman in insurance company. Actually, they do have. They have two escalation levels of G uh, grievance redressal. They are lip service. Ha, that is true. That, that for that we. Ha, this is the that, this is the office. You go there. There is one person. Ha, I'll, I'll look after. So that is where. Look for some other thing. That is where they no, can. No, no, not uh, not in the last six months. So that you are talking about before six months. So that is where we have. Now it has changed. If you are not changed, you tell us. Okay, I will read that. Yeah. So that is where I want to tell that like uh, having institutions or having rules is not enough. Like uh, there are two levels of grievance readers and officers in every insurance company. But uh, what we find that uh, find is that all the replies are auto generated. And when uh, you, like your complaint is noted, your uh, uh, com complaint ID is this, you can uh, kindly wait for uh, this many days. All those things will be there, and finally, second reply will be if you are not satisfied with your, with our reply, you may approach the insurance ombudsman. That is the general reply we have seen in many of the complaints. Of course, there are some people who do respond also. I am not uh, discounting their uh, sincerity. Uh, that that is one thing. Then that is the picture of salt pond. Then the second, then the third question. Let me complete the answer, sir. The third question was about uh, uh, ombudsman people being able to approach from anywhere. Actually, from anywhere they can approach. As per the insurance ombudsman rules, also they can approach. Uh, uh, they can give a complaint at an ombudsman center where the branch of the insurance office is located, ins insurance company is located, or where his residential area falls. And we have received some complaints where, uh, I mean, uh, the party uh, just because he is uh, transferred. Uh, uh, no, no, not transferred. Actually, uh, it was a Hindi person. He was not uh, fluent in any other language. But because he was in, he had an address in Hyderabad. Some other ombudsman center had directed him to Hyderabad. But we talked to him. We had his mobile number. We talked to him and found out which is comfortable for him. Then he said the, the other place is comfortable for him. I think I, if I am right, it was Haryana. So uh, we directed him to that place and we have sent a mail also to that ombudsman center that we had talked to this person and he had informed us that uh, your center is comfortable for him to deal with the complaint. So uh, anywhere in India we can have, it, it, it is only dependent on the convenience of the cu customer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, last two, we have last two questions there. One, yeah. one, one, one minute. One minute. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, yeah. My name is Srinivas Rao. And, uh, yes, sir. Uh, my name is Srinivas and uh, uh, I am an insurance service provider uh, representing majority of the insurance companies. And uh, my question is to Nirmala Devi, madam. Uh, so, you are referring to 47% uh, of the cases actually uh, getting resolved uh, during the initial stages. Uh, so, I would like 43%. Okay. So, I would like to know the uh, overall percentage of the cases uh, which have been. Uh, have come out in favor of uh, the customer or the uh, policy holder, policy holder pr primarily. Uh, that is first part and uh, the second part is uh, as somebody uh, while taking the insurance uh, policy, uh, if somebody is mentioning that they have, uh, they are a socially uh, alcoholic or I think I am audible. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Uh, so, if somebody is mentioning that so they are uh, socially or responsibly alcoholic and while they have mentioned it, if the insurance company has accepted the proposal, so do they have or do they stand any chance of actually rejecting a claim and if so, uh, what, what does the uh, ombudsman say about this? Again, sir, I couldn't get it. Right. Uh, so, while uh, during the initial stage of application, the proposal document, so the insurance company, uh, the customer mentions that he is socially alcoholic, okay, whether uh, whatever uh, by whatever ways, and uh, if the insurance company is accepting that particular proposal, so even if there is any chance of uh, the claim occurring because of right, I mean liver cirrhosis because of alcohol, or even because of any other reason, uh, so does the insurance company? I mean, why does the insurance company reject the claim? And in that case, in that scenario, uh, how does ombudsman take this case from there on? 
normally such a case will not happen because uh, the first and foremost duty of the proposer is to disclose his medical condition and his habits <laughs> or whatever family history, whatever is asked upon the proposal form. And if these are disclosed, normally the insurer will not reject also. And supposing he, he had disclosed and then the uh, insurer had rejected, then the ombudsman uh, normally, because it is the decision of the honorable ombudsman, normally I can say that it will not be, um, uh, mean, the complaint will be allowed only. Uh, however, in health insurance policies, uh, liver cirrhosis falls into a permanent exclusion. Uh, but however, still the opportunity was given to the insurer, no? the uh, uh, proposer had disclosed everything truthfully and it was for the insurer to decide whether to accept the proposal or not and having assumed that risk, the ombudsman orders orders the insurer to uh, accept the risk. So, okay, uh, that means that I mean the ombudsman uh, takes it in favor of the, the complainant, applicant, uh, the yeah, complainant, complainant basically. Yeah, yeah. Because, okay. uh, because just because it is mentioned in yeah. the permanent exclusion of the uh, policy, that so usually the insurance uh, companies go against it. Huh. That is true, but if the proposer has done his part, right. then he is not at fault. Okay. Okay. And how about the total percentage of the claims? Total percentage, if I remember right, uh, I do not have the statistics right. Eight, 80, um, around 79 to 80 percent is in favor of the complainant. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Shivan. Uh, this side, if any, anyone is there, otherwise I uh, will come. Okay, sir, here. Yes, sir. There is a difference. I mean, two questions. So, there are any Ombudsman ने order pass किया, but insurance company is not honoring that order. What policy will they can do? Number two. Number two. If a policy holder is not able to represent the case in ombudsman, can I? Uh, represent on behalf of the uh, policy holder why it should not be allowed. Yeah, first of all, um, as per rules, the award of the ombudsman is binding on the insurer and 99.99% .99 of the cases are being uh, complied with by the insurer. Uh, there are examples, very, very few only, uh, where the insurer has approached the court, appealed to the uh, high court against the award of the ombudsman. No, uh, they didn't get it. Uh, uh, that, then you please uh, let me know which is the case and then we will check. Madam, in this case, we would like that the government be forced to pass a law which says can ombudsman award once given and if not honored should be treated as, as a contempt case. Not, not just a contempt of court, arrears of land revenue and therefore the property of the insurance company can be attached. I am not no. competent to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> you are This is This is This is not China. This is a democratic This is not tender made to the ombudsman, insurance companies, head office, even central government, even state government, CM, he orders is not compliance by the insurance company. Which ombudsman? After that, uh, Jaipur. Oh. Jaipur. Okay, if it is pertaining to our ombudsman center, please let me know, sir. Then what happened in Jaipur? Jaipur. What I don't understand. Sorry? What, what happened in Jaipur? Jaipur, yeah. sir. Policy order ke favor ke andar me ombudsman ne award diya. But insurance company ke CRM tak ne usko deny kar diya ki I will not accept this. Unne 90,000 rupiah cataract ka operation ka pass kiya, order diya, 95,000 ka. But CRM is saying that it is not. It is not for 90 days. The insurance company has not gone to the high court, nor has it gone to the high court. The policy holder has... No, no, the policy holder has what done? The policy holder has written a letter in every place, mails, even the ombudsman has written again. This is the case of the ombudsman. How many years old are you? Now, sir, within one year. Within one year. Please, send me. I will send you. Send me. Hello. Hello. Okay. On behalf of the policy holder, I I should be able to find on behalf of the policy holder because I knew each and every terms and conditions of the policy. Or 
you know, a case is actually taken up by any other forum, like consumer forum or any other forums, then uh, the consumer will not have the option to approach the insurance uh, ombudsman. Then. How about uh, someone approaching insurance ombudsman, and if the case doesn't go in favor of the customer, will he or she have the option to approach the other forums or district courts or the higher authorities? Yes, they have. They have that option. If it is, if the ombudsman's award is not in favor of the complainant, he can approach other forums after that. If the award goes against the custom complainant, he can approach consumer forum or court or any other. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Madam, how many questions you like to take more? Because, uh, I, I think, they see, it is not fair from uh, our part, inviting her and uh, uh, doing it. Madam, one small question. Yeah, last two questions here. Last one question. That is respect. Yeah, he and you. Okay. Just one hey, second. After him, you talk Madam. after him. Yeah. Sir, one small question. Actually, uh, it's a good uh, initiative taken by the ombudsman. Because uh, I think it is an internal arrangement uh, made by the companies to uh, make a ombudsman to resolve the issues. No, no, no. Resolve the, any disputes. Okay. Because you need not to approach any lawyer like that thing. Because it yeah. is a simple mechanism. That's right. Now my question is actually, now uh, what I heard is most of the cases go unnoticed, rather uh, uh, not paid. And uh, customers also sometimes they neglect. What I heard is the statistics shows that more than 25,000 cases go unnoticed. Hardly 2 to 3,000 will come up to you ombudsman. Now my question is very clear. Do you make any, do you take any initiative to educate the customers in this regard that you can approach ombudsman with simple process? Yes, we have. Please. Last. Pain itself is a motivation. Yeah. Pain of pain tax. Pain Awareness. Then, madam has already replied. Again, she is still replying. Here also covered it. Actually, we are uh, we have initiated many publicity activities like uh, uh, giving banners to insurance companies' offices uh, in, to be displayed in prominent places. We have had uh, a display of uh, uh, ombudsman with address and email and phone number in the um, metro trains in Hyderabad. Uh, in all in the public sector insurance companies we have covered this year. And next year, I mean, uh, we no, will no, be covering other private and insurance. And also the Bhima Lokpal Divas. And yeah, Bhima Lokpal Divas also we had conducted uh, in an elaborate manner. We had distributed pamphlets there. Uh, actually, here also we had uh, distributed some, I mean, we had given some pamphlets. It is yes. distributed. Yeah. Mm, some pamphlets were uh, given here also for awareness among the customers. Uh, if some customer groups are there, they can distribute it among whomever they can. Uh, and um, there are other activities taken by the CIO Council for Insurance Ombudsman have also taken up um, ad, ad campaigns like uh, uh, some uh, what they say, jingles in uh, uh, FM radio, uh, All India radio. So many initiatives have been taken by the Council for Insurance Ombudsman also. And uh, more are in the pipeline. More are in and the more pipeline. are coming. Okay, okay. sir. Here. Yeah. Yeah, last, last. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Ramanand Singharam. Uh, I'm an uh, Eng uh, insurance uh, broking agent. And uh, my uh, suggestion to the Federation is basically like I'm also from travel industry. From uh, July 1st onwards, we have a new uh, thing called the tax collection at source. Instead of GST, uh, the body can uh, give it as TCS. So I pay my tax. Anyway, I pay my tax. Again, at the end of the year, when I am filing the uh, my returns, my uh, whatever the tax you collect, you can repay some part of it, so that I am also happy. And for the senior citizen also, that uh, he is also ready to pay tax to the uh, government of the country. Uh, instead of 18% GST, they can put 5% TCS. He is also having a happiness of giving the money to the government, and he also gets something out of it, uh, like a rebate. Good suggestion. Take it forward. Uh, and one more thing is uh, Akshay Tridhya is coming instead of Akshay Tridhya like uh, the uh, trade union can say insurance to be okay <laughs> now, I, uh, uh, is, uh, to Rajivji okay uh, sir you pointed out that uh, uh, 
uh, the companies, uh, the, the founders or directors getting feared uh, because if the employee do the mistake, uh, the CEOs of the directors will get arrested. Uh, the medical devising manufacturing companies. Uh, so, what is happening in the overseas market? Uh, do the laws same? Uh, how are they manufacturing and uh, how sustainable they are? Uh, is there any difference? In 98 percent cases, Europe, Canada, USA, if there is a non-compliance of quality, like in a car, clutch plate fails, airbag fails, car company will voluntarily call the car back and get the things changed at free of cost basis. That's how it's done. Nobody goes to jail for that. We export to Europe, we export to USA. If things go wrong, they allow us the chance for improving and satisfy the customer. We don't get a threat immediately that we're going to be having a raid coming in the factory and the inspector is going to be coming and then threatening us that I'm going to be under jail. And when we go to the DCJ and complain to him, the DCJ himself says, the inspector thinks he is more khuda than me. They don't consult their bosses and they file the cases or they threaten to file the cases. I have got cases for silly stuff where I am supposed to go to Kerala for court hearings. And these cases go on for 5, 5, 10, 10 years. And of course, they said for simple things like making a syringe. Imagine if I have to make something like a heart valve. So, that's where we have gone totally wrong in India. And we need to correct. But when we start talking about this, then the government will tell us, it's the patient forums who are demanding this. They feel that you want to get away spot free. It's not that we are irresponsible. And you believe them. And you believe them. Yes. Why so do you believe them? It has to be a balanced thing. It is in clear. USA and Europe, you will be basically asked to either recall the patch or correct it. Very rarely they will tell you we will close down the factory or we will suspend the production. Never. But here immediately the threat is like that. So a balanced approach <coughs> must be taken. It way. has to be. You can't do business like that. It's an engineering product. It is not like a chemical. If you have test career, the whole batch chemically will be the same. In an engineering product, you will aim for zero defect. You cannot have zero defect. It's a reality. The best manufacturers cannot achieve that. Motorola put in system for six sigma quality. My company put in system of six sigma quality. We make, we supplied uh, more, more than four billion syringes, for example, last year. Okay. And out of 4 billion syringes, we may have got about 150 complaints within the country. Most people don't make complaints. They don't bother to make complaints. We also think there must be at least 1000 times that. And we have to be becoming better than that. We have a 6 sigma system in the company and the plants run at 5.6, 5.7, 5.9. But to be at 6 every day is not possible, even with the best intentions. Thank you very much. Uh, so friends, we had a really very interactive, very good session. Thank you very much for your wonderful uh, participation and making it very interactive. A big round of applause for us. Madam, uh, uh, it's uh, uh, really enlightening uh, from the ombudsman part, uh, part of it. Yes. And we should also thank Vijayan Mishra to get. No, uh, no, thanks a lot. You see, so very you, you, you could see that, you could see very that how much of information today you passed on to the citizens. Yes. And these, all these friends of mine, We'll pass it on to so many other people. So, uh, so what? The, what? I, my only uh, motive of such interaction is exchanging information. I have learned so much from you all. You know, Lokesh may be keeping quiet, but you people said so many things, which he never tells me. <laughs> Uh, medical device is a lot of learning and you will work together. Yes. I know you have challenges, but at the same time, you have to have a good substitute also. So, nation is first. Let us work for that thing. Chaturvedi, sir, you have always been here for that. In the one point program, we must get him an exclusive legislation. Sir, spoke very well and we are sitting there and work together. Thank you so much. Now, for giving the moment from all of us, can you come? Our friend Sandhya Siraji and uh, Mr. Sukumar sir, can we invite you to present? Please the come on stage, sir, to present the mementos. Uh, please. So, see, get, for uh, both of them getting up with a yes. <laughs> please, please come. Very honest for us. <laughs>
Can we have can we please have a huge round of applause? I think the applause should continue. You can start from here. Start from here. of grievance redressal mechanisms, but uh, initially we would like to share a few ex uh, examples of uh, some cases which we have dealt with. And I agree with uh, uh, Mr. Rajiv Nath when he told that uh, it is always better to prevent grievances from arising rather than trying to solve them after they have arisen. Uh, I have uh, one or two uh, case studies with me. One was uh, of a naturopathy treatment where the insured was admitted in an Arogya Alayam. Uh, a naturopathy center for treatment of osteoarthritis, varicose veins and lumbago. The hospital bill was for 25,000 but the claim was rejected by the insurer stating that uh, the treatments received in health hydros, na nature cure uh, clinics, spas or similar establishments are not covered. The claim for naturopathy is actually restricted to 25% of the basic sum assured. 
and the admissibility of the claim depends on the very fact whether the treatment was for the same ailment or for some domestic reasons. In the instant case, it was for ailments and besides the, this Arugya Alayam was also accorded referral status by Health, Medical and Family Welfare Departments of Government of Andhra Pradesh in order to meet the ends of justice to the insured, the forum allowed the claim by directing the insurer to process and settle the claim. This was one case and uh, uh, there was a rejection the amount 25,000 sir and uh, there was uh, another rejection of claim for bariatric surgery in fact we get many such cases uh, in the ombudsman office um, we have chosen a few only the insured was admitted in the hospital for management of obesity claim was rejected stating that bariatric surgery can only be allowed on cashless basis the insured person was unable to lose weight through traditional methods and was advised to go for bariatric surgery by a qualified surgeon. While deciding the complaint, the forum observed that the hospitalization and surgery are not disputed by the insurer. Hospitalization and surgery not disputed, the forum, but they were willing to pay only if it is cashless. Uh, then uh, the forum opined that there was uh, no restrictive condition for admitting the claim only on cashless. There cannot be a restrictive condition. Therefore, the rejection was set aside. Forum means the insurance ombudsman's uh, forum, yes, the, office. the office. The insurance ombudsman. Then there was a partial settlement. That was uh, amount I have not noticed. Okay. Yeah, bariatric surgery means it will be slightly high. Yeah. Then there was very common now. This is very common. Yes, sir. Then there was another rejection of uh, robotic surgery uh, reimbursement. The insured was admitted uh, for robotic right-sided partial nephrectomy, hysterectomy, oophorectomy procedure. The total medical expenses was around 6.6 .6 lakhs and the claim was um, settled by the insurer for 2.5 lakhs saying that the policy condition specifies a sublimit of 2.5. Uh, the forum um, actually um, what we found was the robotic surgery is an advanced medical procedure which reduces human intervention in the surgical process. But the insurer's partial admission is not reasonable because all there are many other allied expenses also. It is only the uh, procedure that has been um, I mean taken as a robotic procedure. There are many other allied charges like OT charges, room rent, doctor's consultation charges, pharmacy bills, diagnostic uh, charges, all those were included within this 2,50,000 capping uh, for the robotic surgery. Hence, the claim was uh, advised to be, I mean, uh, ordered to be admitted. Then there was another case of cocktail therapy where the insured was covered under medical, um, MediClaim and the, the, he had undergone immunotherapy, monoclonal antibody as injection. The claim was for 75,000, uh, disallowed by the insurer. Uh, the person was aged 68 years, uh, I mean, um, uh, okay, uh, th was not given as per the, ch uh, and this uh, treatment is actually not as per the choice of the insured, but it is a decision of the doctor and considering the age and medical conditions of the insured. And uh, the insur insurer's contention was that it is authorized only for specific usage under emergency usage authorization. The medical needs and necessities of the senior citizens are to be given priority and empathetic consideration and considering that the forum ordered settlement of the claim. So, um, like these are a few instances where uh, we have, uh, I mean, the uh, Honorable Insurance Ombudsman has um, paid, the, I mean, um, directed the insurer to pay the claims and um, as we said, it is actually uh, better to prevent the, uh, uh, the grievances from ri arising rather than um, uh, coming to the ombudsman or any other forum. For that, um, uh, in our experience, we feel that a uh, lot of things have to be done for the for raising the awareness of the customers, not only about the, uh, of course, awareness about the availability of forums like insurance ombudsman um, and other grievance reducible machinery like consumer forums, everything, awareness has to be there. But beyond that, the primary awareness has to be about the, basic insurance as such like um, many of the people do not know the importance of uh, their signature in the proposal form uh, most of the in most cases we find that it was the agents who have advised them not to disclose a pre, pre existing disease uh, or um, uh, like um, uh, many non disclosures happen 
only because I mean uh, the complaint goes to the agent finally, but there is no use. Is it not? Actually, the uh, signature is given by the proposal means he is taking the responsibility for whatever he has stated in the proposal. And, um, and uh, like uh, coming to the grievance redressal mechanism, uh, as a grievance redressal me mechanism, the advantages are not only that we are providing a relief to the customer, but also it forms as a part of an educative mechanism uh, where the orders of the or awards of the ombudsman can be used as an educative input for uh, raising further quality of underwriting or even product design. Um, and our centre has, uh, uh, I mean, uh, out of we we deal with life insurance complaints, health and general insur insurance complaints. But we find that more than 55% of the complaints we receive pertain to health insurance, uh, and. Uh, Mm. And on receipt of a complaint, it, our uh, first step is to go through a process of mediation uh, where we take up the complaint with the insurer for resolution and it is when mediation fails that hearings are conducted and uh, an appropriate award is passed by the Honourable Ombudsman. Then um, uh, we are happy to say that many of the insurance companies have responded proactively to our mediation efforts due to which we were able to resolve a good number of complaints, around 43% of our health insurance complaints through mediation. So we take this opportunity to thank all stakeholders for their cooperation in making this possible because uh, mediation efforts reduce further litigation and ensures a win-win situation both for the customer and for the insurer. That's all I have to say, President. Thank you, Mr. Chandra Devi, uh, for giving us a flavor of what an ombudsman is doing and can do. In fact, that is the biggest challenge we face today, that awareness about ombudsman is not much. Their office is right here in uh, Lakhrikapol area only, mass of time. Uh, but uh, very few people know the location, they don't come. Uh, in the entire uh, the, the state of uh, Telangana and AP, only 2000 complaints per annum come there. Where there are, it is only the tip of the iceberg. Many people perhaps don't know that there is an institution like this. So our effort now uh, for the, in the last two years would be to uh, see that the uh, office, the uh, forum is uh, popularized by creating an awareness campaign. Uh, now, uh, with the permission of Mr. Shekhar Agarwalji, I would like to leave. I have an official function on the National Civil Services Day. Today is the National Civil Services Day. I would attend that officially. So, I would request Mr. Shekhar Agarwal to take over uh, uh, and conduct the meeting. There are two speakers left. Uh, yeah. Sir, two bullet points, if you allow me to. Yeah, please, please go ahead. There will be a detailed Q&A afterwards uh, after all the speakers. Because Merely. you are concerned yeah, yeah. Ombudsman's office. Correct. Bullet point number one, Ombudsman limits should be raised to 50 lakhs. Which we have already recommended, as okay. I mentioned. Second, all there should be a representation made by the office of the Ombudsman to the government or the competent powers that in certain standard cases, the decision of the Ombudsman should acquire the status of stair diseases, that is a law that if a cataract claim in Mumbai city is payable for 50,000, no further questions, the award is given. They, they, this, would, this would, as, as everyone... Uh, no, in in fact, uh, you reserve such questions till the end, Mr. Professor uh, Bajan Mishra, who is also part of the committee, he will answer, well, and she is also present here. So I will uh, seek your indulgence to leave this uh, panel discussion because I have to attend Program is actually starting at 5.30. I will join late. Thank you for your presence. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sikhaji. Please. Uh, thank you very much, Acharya sir. He was a great support for this whole event. Now, uh, may I uh, request uh, Professor Bijon Mishraji, the chair, to kindly present a small memento on behalf of all of us. To Acharya sir. Thank you. Thank you. So now we left with the. Uh, when will can we take the question? We'll take. Uh, you'll get enough time. This is so last session. And Vijay Mishra ji promise you that we can be here at night, twelve o'clock. So. <laughs> No, yes. I pur purposefully has kept this session, the time he is there. So, okay. so uh, 
here we have got Dr. Chaturvedi, he was former director of NISE and uh, very dedicatedly and with a passion he is serving the cause of uh, cancer and uh, it's, uh, it's a very old friend of ours but uh, it's uh, very inspiring to always meet him and uh, now over to Dr. Chaturvedi sir. Thank you so much. Actually in his each and every breath there is a, he, he sees a slide to solve the issues of cancer. Yeah. Okay, very uh, passionate, passionately he does. Good evening friends. I don't take much time. But let me tell you a little background. You know, there should be a cause for any action. Right? Without any cause, nobody will do. Today is a special day where we should talk about this. 2030, every family is going to have one cancer patient. This is what World Health Organization comes out with. I do not know how the insurance company is going to give insurance, especially for cancer, for people. We go to villages and talk to them and we will be able to really help in seeing that this small amount policy to cover I mean, cancer should be taken up in a very big way. And till let me, now let me tell you the background. I am a cancer survivor myself. 2016 I got colon cancer. 2014 my wife died after 10 years of uh, ovarian cancer. Right? I have two sons who are settled in the US. I stay in India only for servicing people in people of cancer. We go to we go to rural areas. We go to rural areas, talk to people about cancer. This is what I was telling, even when uh, the team was uh, was, was talking about. Fifty percent of the cases can be saved if we can really create awareness about cancer. This is something. We take a team of doctors, screen them for breast cancer, oral cancer, and cervical cancer which is very essential. These are the three major cancers in most of the developing countries, in India and Telangana as well. And till today, we would have covered about 6,000 women and about 50, 50 villages we have covered. And we also give orientation to youth on tobacco, alcohol. Then we talk about menstrual hygiene, physical hygiene, and problems of human papillomavirus. That is a big topic, which, which probably we should have a seminar separately. HPV is something that causes oropharyngeal cancer and cervical cancer. That is the main thing. It is sexually transmitted from men to women and it takes 20 years for it to grow. By the time they realize, they wouldn't know what they have done 20 years back. This is the most unfortunate thing. We should be able to be aware of it. And we started an NGO known as Swastava Cancer Care for which the chief pattern is Mr. Mohan Kanda, who was chief ex-chief secretary, and Mr. R. P. Singh, IPS, is our president. And all team members indirectly or directly affected because of cancer. So this is what we are doing. And next year, we are taking up in a very big way. Th thank God, in two years' time, no work is came, and then they started funding us. This year, I am going to get another four or five organizations coming forward to fund our projects. Now, there is a big concern. I am 75, right? And I, 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 I never remember that I am a cancer survivor. But the insurance companies are making me uh, get reminded of it. This is the misfortune. See, three years back, I was paying only 40,000 rupees for my 20, 20 lakh insurance. Suddenly, they made it double. The reason that is given looks so irresponsible. They say claims are more. That's why we are increasing. You reduce your number of salaries, remove your, your increments for one year, and reduce your staff to half, and then see why, why do you make a person who is 70 year old to suffer again? Where from does he bring? How many people get pensions? I mean, I'm, I don't get any one rupee pension. Where from do I pay? 80,000 rupees for my insurance. That, that is one part. Adding fuel to the fire, Two days back, I received a, an intimation. See, the, there is an insurance, Andhra Bank and United India, joint insurance. This is known as, you know, the Aragya Dan. This is known as Aragya Dan. Right? I, I don't know whether you call it Aragya Dan or Aragya Dan. You know what, you know what, you know what happened? I'll, I'll tell you the reason. I received a message. Dear customer, we regret to inform you that we are withdrawing 
Union, uh, Bank of India, Aragidan policy from 6th of March. And it will no longer be available to you for renewal. You may please contact United India if you want. This is a message that comes. I do not know how many people, there are at least about 1 million policy holders like this. I don't know how many people really died of heart attack because there is no life coverage. But somehow my heart is strong. I am still alive, standing in front of you. Luckily, you know, yesterday I received one message from Federation saying that there is a group that is formed in the lighter vein. Please take it easy. The group's name was HIV. Right? And I, 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 it was a shock to me. I immediately started looking at my policy, whether HIV is covered or not. <laughs> whether I should join that group or not. Finally, it is, it is this seminar that has come up today. Okay, so, let, let us see that HIV does not come near us. <laughs> now, see, this is what happens. The, this announcement, I, I, apply, I, I sent a mail to Ambushman. No response. Absolutely, totally no response. I am sorry for saying it, ma'am. Totally no response. I even informed Vijayan Mishra sir. He has been a friend of me for the last 20 years. No Mishra sir said, no Dekhenge. response. No response. No response. No there are too many claims here. That's why, uh, that's why they have increased. Now, is it an answer to me? How can you reduce my 80,000 to 40,000? So that I am more comfortable and I can continue to live a quality life. Sir, 20 years back you should have met advisors like us. Sorry, sir? <laughs> 20 years back you should have met advisors like us. <laughs> anyway, I mean, I, I, I want to... Add, add, to... add to that, just one and a half or two years back, when Andhra Bank was merged, mm. they came out with an increased rate at that time also. Mm, yes, yes, same yes. Same Union yes, Bank and same yes. uh, Union, United India. So, it, so the banking institution has become like a stone in the blind man's eye. Blind, blind person. Hat me patthar hai. Kaha bhinte koi janta nahi. This is this is how this is how things are happening, and it is playing with lives of people. That's what I'm more worried about. I want to see that it stops with me, and nobody else will uh, will be affected because of this. Now this is what I wanted to share with you all. Kindly see, find out a new policy if required with a low premium, only to cover cancer, because cancer is going to be rampant, it is not going to stop, in coming 10 years, the number is going to double. Sir, cancer care policies are there, but the premium is quite... Sir, only Life Insurance Corporation of India no, came no, out no, with no, a policy. No, 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 no. I don't know how much. Other general insurance companies and standalone health insurance companies are providing standard cancer, cancer, care, standard cancer care policies. Sir, if cancer care policies are there, where it is reachable by a common man, Kindly let me know. When I, when I talk about awareness in a, in a village, I talk to them. Go in for this policy, pay only 10 rupees, so that you are covered for 1 lakh. Something like that. Whatever, whatever. I will be too happy because I, I, I am a wanderer, I move around. Okay? Yes. Reasonably affordable rates for people in the Mufasil areas in the right age. Yes. Where you are right and where we are wrong is we are unable to reach there. Sir, we are, I, I will reach. I will take you there. Okay. I promise to do that. Enter Telangana, I, I, I move around. I talk to rural people. My life is only in the villages. Yes, sir. Okay. I will be uh, too happy. Join us. Let us join hands. Sponsor some programs. <laughs> you, are, you are all people who have been corporate. Sponsor some programs. Funding. We are individual we'll doing. We are, we are individual we yes. are fighting for the senior citizens also, sir. First class. Wonderful. We are, we are, we are, we are fighting for senior citizens. Food on your premium. Also. Great. I am so happy about it. GST and stop the premium rising after the age of 60. 60. Excellent. Uh, Excellent. We are continuously but, but, fighting the senior citizens. But, companies, sir, see, I am traveling to US to see my children. I, I went to United India, asked them for travel insurance to be given. Chaturvedi, sir. They asked only one minute. Let me complete this. You know, I asked for travel insurance. They asked me my age. I said 75. Sorry, we are not giving. <laughs> now, this is the fate. They, 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 sir, they are not, not giving because you talk like 57, not 75. <laughs>
So thank you. So uh, I, I, I think before we go ahead, Vichundi has got some points to make. No, no, I, I, I don't have any points. He mentioned my name, that's why I had to come. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I, okay, now, now listen to me. I heard you. You better listen to me now. <laughs> <laughs> you please listen to me because I heard you. What? Each and every word I heard you. <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Okay, very nice. You are doing a great work. Please carry on. See, what I want to tell you is, nobody is ready to cook the food and feed you. You have to cook it yourself. And that's what I have been doing for 40 years. You see, I am teaching people how to cook. <laughs> because what I want to tell you is that he gets away saying that I told Bijan Mishra, but he never came back to me. <laughs> he never came back to me. He might have been telling me on the elevator or somewhere that I have got this, 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 this. And he expects me to retain that and resolve that without any details about okay. what he's talking about. So. What I want to tell you all is where we go wrong. I appreciate it. So let's let's look at the sponsors. What do you read? Have you ever seen a sponsorship coming from a patient's group and a consumer organization? Never, never, never. Have you ever seen? Never. And why? So let what I want to tell you all is, and I tell especially my consumer friends who are into the consumer movement. And people like Mr. Chaturvedi, who is propagating, you know, treatment for cancer victims. It's a big job managing resources to mobilize resources in India. Let me tell you that. Because the people who are earning from you, who earn profit out of you, they can spend that money in whatever manner they want, without your consent, which is your money. Why are you so quiet? You should react to it. You see, the point which I am making is, in this country, people use your money, people keep your money with them, but they don't want to spend it for you. So what I want to tell you all is, till you don't raise your voice, you will never be heard. If Bijan Mishra is being heard, it is because I am not scared of anybody, because I am talking the truth, and I am talking the truth on behalf of you, because if you are not speaking, I am speaking. You see, my, my only issue is that you can't get away telling Ombudsman doesn't respond. Back, no, no, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. I'm, I'm coming to that. You see, the, the ombudsman was not responding because we were found sleeping. If we were alert and if we were awake, the ombudsman dare not go to sleep. And that is what we call Jago Grahak Jago. You heard that campaign? Yes. yes. Whose money got used? Your and my money. 100 crores every year, yours and my money got used to use to bring that campaign into the forefront in the country, which is today one of the most successful public spirited campaign supported by government of India. And do you know how much of your money is still lying yet to be utilized to get you educated and made aware of? More than 8,000 crores. That's only in one place. We have got agencies like Investor Education and Protection Fund. We have got unclaimed money of the insurance companies lying with the regulator to promote for senior citizens. Have you ever approached the senior citizens? Have you ever approached IRDA to find out what they are doing with that money for senior citizens? You have not. I'm sure you have not.